Welcome inside AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. I'm Ryan Castle alongside Mr. Fourth and Long, Jesse Holly. It is once again time for the Blue-Gray Football All-American Bowl here at the home of the Dallas Cowboys. Such an exciting time as always, Jesse. A star is going to be born here this afternoon. Absolutely. You come into these games and you have all these young athletes, exciting, youthful, energetic, and they have an opportunity of a lifetime to come out here and display and try to make an opportunity for themselves to better their chances of going to the next level. Some of these guys have already committed to play college football. Others still looking for that opportunity at the next level. And as always, Jesse, there's going to be a name that we didn't know coming into today that's going to jump off the page by the end of the day. Absolutely. The cream always rises to the top. And it's in these type of games when you have those exciting athletes come out of nowhere, whether it be offense or defense or special teams, they come out and they perform in front of the crowd, in front of the coaches, in front of the scouts, and they find themselves in a position where they're saying, wait, you didn't see me before but you see me now should be an exciting time as always we will wait and see who will be born today as the next star in college football here at AT&T Stadium the kickoff is coming right up here on the impact football network
The opening kickoff just moments away here inside AT&T Stadium, home of the Dallas Cowboys. This is the 11th year that the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl game will be played. Started all the way back in 2013. Blue-Gray football founded back in 1989 by Gus and Eric Bell. And uh, what a special, special organization this is, helping high school student athletes discover their road to the next level to play college football through combines and now through these All-American Bowls. And Jesse, it's just always such a special time to be around these NFL coaching staffs inside this NFL stadium. And just to get to see the looks and the, the eyes of these kids as they step out onto this field, really for, uh, for most of them for the final time as high school football players, the chance to go out, have some fun, and get some good things on tape as they look for that avenue to the next level. You know, what an absolute treat for these young men. You get an opportunity to not only be coached by veteran, NFL veterans across the league. I mean, that's that's knowledge that people wish they can have. You know, respect to all of their high school coaches in their respective cities and towns and states. But to have and to spend time with a position coach, with an offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator that played the National Football League and to impart that wisdom on you is something that's invaluable. And then on top of that, you get an opportunity to come play in one of the most world-renowned stadiums in all of sports right here in AT&T Stadium. So you know, a lot of these kids who will go on to the next level, some may not, but to have this opportunity to be here and to have this moment is something special, something they'll never forget for the rest of their life. And what an exciting time as we get ready for this game to begin. It will be the West team kicking off to Team East. Team East in the blue jerseys, Team West in the gray jerseys. We'll talk a little bit more about those jerseys here in just a second as Blue Gray got a merch upgrade yes. here in 2023. And the opening kickoff is sent high and deep. And here comes the return from Team East out to the 15-yard line and dropped at about the 17 on the return was Marquane Taylor from Columbine High School in Colorado. And that's where Team East will start just shy of their own 20-yard line. And these games are always interesting because when we watch them, there's always a guy or two who makes a play on special teams, returns a punt, returns a kick. And those are the type of positions when you go into the next level, college and then to the pros, where you can find a way and find a niche uh, into a team and onto a team by doing special teams very well. So John Shapin will be the quarterback for Team East. He is a 6'1", 175-pound quarterback out of Truman, Missouri. And he hands off on an end around on the first play, and it's Team East into the second level at midfield. Big play and a great start to the drive for Team East. David Woodward from Radford City, Virginia, with a burst around the left side for a big play. Yeah, that play's coming back. There's a flag down. Looks like it's going to be a holding on that play. But before I can get a chance to say it, every time we watch these games, the opening plays and the opening drives, there's always some sort of trick play or some sort of trickery to catch the opposing team sleeping. That right there was a successful play almost. The holding is going to bring it back. And so what was a great play and a huge gain uh, is now coming back because of a holding penalty. Well, even though that play will not stand, just file away the name David Woodward in your filing cabinet. He's the guy who busted that for a big run. The holding penalty, it was a spot foul, so it'll be first down and about seven. Ball at the 20 for Team East. Shapin will throw. Pocket collapsing, and he will go down back inside the 10-yard line. Several 
Great jerseys in to converge on shape and Carson Combs out of Marshall, Texas, was one of the first there. Yeah, it looked like that was a kind of a quick three stretch, you know, three step, let the ball out go quickly. The, the defender jumped in front of that route and it wasn't there, so he's trying to go to the second and third option. And when you're in the when you're in the quick game, you don't get a chance to go to your second and third option before that rush gets there. And so that's resulted in the sack right there uh, by Team West on Team East. It's always interesting to see early in these games just how successful the offenses are able to be. We've had just about six hours worth of practice time together over the last two or three days. And on third down, Team East will stay conservative and hand off to about the 15-yard line. Not much else there for the running back, Marquane Taylor out of Columbine High School in Colorado, tackled at the 15-yard line at Team East. Will be looking at a third down and 13, and they're going for it. Like they're going for it, backed up in their own, uh, their own, their own territory. This is this is a gutsy call right here. Maybe they're just trying to push him uh, to get him. Oh, it's third down. I'm sorry, I thought, I thought that was fourth down. Okay, that's right. We had the, we had the holding play. Okay, so it's third down. Um, you know, one thing that you'll see a lot of these teams offensively, they wear the armbands, and so that's trying to give them an opportunity to kind of put an extra couple plays in with the guys not having to remember those plays with the armband situation. It's a nice play there by Shapen to keep that play alive with his feet and then fire it out with a completion and a first down up to the 30-yard line as that pass was caught by Nathan Sauls of Katie Jordan High School here in Texas. And Shapen looked like he was calling for timeout. Not sure what that signal was about, but he's got two running backs with him in the backfield and movement up front and a penalty flag. Yeah, right. That's what we call the smash route, right? You look, you walk around and you're kind of punching your fist into your hand for a smash concept. Usually that's kind of a, uh, a short route, a hitch with the corner coming in behind that. You run that a lot of times, you know, man coverage, zone coverage, gives you an opportunity to kind of do a high-low on that cornerback. It looks like a timeout from up here with us, but it's punching into the hand, calling smash, smash, smash. So I'm glad the ref didn't pick it up. You would hate to have that timeout when you're trying to get a play call. Dick Bell and Rodney Beasley at the controls of this offense for Team East. And uh, I'm not sure that we've seen Smash Route implemented uh, in a blue-gray game before, but uh, Shape and Colin for it right there. Just underway in the first quarter. Here's first down and five after the penalty. A handoff up the middle for not much. Once again, that was Taylor on the carry, and he gains a couple to the 37-yard line to bring up second and about three. And you alluded to these, you know, these young athletes, they didn't have much time to practice, much time to meet this week. So a lot of this stuff is put in, and, and that just shows you the intelligence of these young athletes to be able to work six hours together and be able to put an offense and a defense together to go out and play in a football game. So kudos to the coaches and kudos to them as well. Cartez Williams, the running back. Shapen will throw on second down, quick out to the left. And the pass is caught by Taylor and a nice tackle made in the open field by the West's Tristan Black, a linebacker from Glen Rose, Texas. We'll take another look at that wonderful open field tackle to bring Taylor down to make it third and about two. Yeah, and you know, on that play right there, try to get the running back out into the flat. He can use his speed and outrun the linebacker, but a great play just being able to know who your guy is, not get caught up and confused in what's happening in the backfield and being able to make an open, open field tackle short of the first down. Chapin is perfect on this opening drive. They hand off on third down and Cartez Williams hit before he got to the first down marker, but pushes forward and on second effort, will move the sticks for Team East up to the 42 yard line. You know, one thing I want fans to look at, and you want to talk about how that high school football influences the National Football League, look at what you see now. So much shotgun, right? Everything is run from the shotgun, run from the pistol. So what you end up having in the National Football League is if the athletes are used to this in high school and college, they then have to implement it now because they're all used to this type of system. They've all grown up in this type of system. And so you're seeing it on display right here in the, uh, the Blue Gray All-American game. Two receivers to the left here for Shapen and a handoff. Taylor sliding by one defender as he crosses the 45 to the 46 yard line for a gain of four. Marquane Taylor on the carry. And then you see what we call the RPO, right? You got two running backs, sometimes one running back, but the quarterback gets the snap. 
He puts it in the belly of the running back, and now you make a decision. You want to have those linebackers come up. If they come up, you can pull it out and run it. You can have pass plays off of it. You can also hand it to the running back So for, for, you know, for a, a game. And that kind of keeps the defense on their heels because you have a three-way option, or a triple threat, uh, if, if you will, to have that offensively, and it really puts the defense in a bind. Second and about six, shaping across the middle. That pass is caught up around midfield. Brought in by Xavier Sanchez. And Sanchez will be a couple of yards shy of a first down. Here comes another third down for Team East. They are perfect on third down so far. This is a good opening drive for Coach Dick Bell's team. And the quarterback, Chapman, man, he's been really good on this drive. Look at him at the line of scrimmage, commanding, pointing guys here, there, quick quarterback sneak. I mean, it's a great play right there. I, I like the way that this team is running their offense early on in this football game. Chapin coming under center, trying to sneak for the first down. Doesn't look like he got it. It's going to be fourth down. As uh, Team West did a nice job up front to be ready for that. And it looks like Team East will send out their punt team. So a promising opening drive for Team East will stall out around midfield. It's unfortunate because Shapin was really doing a nice job, not going deep down the field, but doing a good job finding guys underneath who were open and putting it on target for them. Well, they took it out of his hands on third down and about two. He came up about a half a yard short on the QB sneak. So now Michael Hartshorn, the punter out of Arlington Heights in Pennsylvania. Nice spiraling punt. Bounce sideways and go out of bounds at around the 25 yard line. So just under 11 minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Team West will go out on offense for the first time. But uh, some promising things from Team East in the early going, Jesse. I liked how they ran the football, shaping and controlling the offense, as you said, Not just from a throwing aspect, but also from a play calling aspect as well. Yeah, I thought, I thought Coach Bell was going to go go for it right there. I know it's midfield, but it's an all-star game. These type of games, you got to just gotta just go ahead and push the envelope just a little bit. You had maybe a, a yard, a half a yard to get. I might win for it in this situation, but he punted it. Now we'll see what Team uh, West can do. Aiden Armenta will start as their quarterback. He'll hand it off on first down. And a nice run around the left side from Brennan Hills out of Castile High School in Arizona. Getting some interest from Big Sky Conference schools. And a gain of about three and a half on the game's first play for Team West offensively. Aiden Armenta out of La Cueva High School in New Mexico being looked at by the Aggies of New Mexico State. Second down and seven. Armenta will throw quickly to the left side. Pass caught and slipping out of, out of the tackle is Jarrell Shepard out of West Memphis High School in Arkansas. We've had several players out of that high school in these blue-gray All-American Bowls over the years, and Shepard, the latest, will get a first down up to the 40-yard line. That's a good play right there. That's a simple hitch route, right? Use speed, push him off with speed, put the brakes on, quarterback delivers the ball right to the receiver, being able to catch the ball and turn up the field for positive yardage. Good start right now for Team, uh, for team West. From the 40-yard line, Armento will hand off, and this is Hills again with a burst around right tackle. And we'll get up to the 45-yard line for a gain of five. In on the stop for Team East was Travis Tolliver from West Jefferson High School in Louisiana. Hills doesn't have a lot of size on him, Jesse, but runs powerfully with his uh, body down low to the ground. And, you know, we've, we've kind of transitioned our way of thinking when it comes to athletes nowadays. You, you got to be certain size to play quarterback. You got to be certain size to play running back. got to be certain size to play tight. All that has kind of shifted. And so now guys may not be as big as what we used to in the past, but the ability to run the football and pass the football, that has changed the way the game has been played. Armenta will throw here on second down, quickly out to the right. The pass is caught for minimal gain by Devin Matthews out of Seguin High School in Texas, a Conference USA target. A nice tackle there made by Team East. Travis Tolliver, number 40, in there again. It's going to be third down and two. And one of the things you'll see in this game, there are no blitzes. So you're not supposed to be blitzing defensively. Uh, you may see some man coverage, but 
you know, a lot of times you, you kind of you may see some zone like right here. You got we got, we got cover three or man to man right here uh, on, on on team team East, but you won't see any blitzes in this game. Delayed draw and that didn't work. Team East in the backfield in a hurry to make the stop. Really nice play defensively there by Team East. So we'll take a look. That's Brent Hopp, a defensive lineman out of Turner High School. He's headed to Central Michigan, and he puts an end to the drive for Team West. Yeah, these man-to-man -man blocking schemes, when you miss your man, uh, he meets that running back in the backfield. Big stop by Team East, and now uh, Team West is out to punt the ball. These are always special moments because punting the football away, these young athletes have so much explosion and so much talent in the open field. And I think we've probably seen a punt return of some sort almost every single All-Star game that we've been in. Yeah, I think you're right. And that always seems to play such a big part in these games. Back Nico with the nice punt for Team West, fielded by Marquane Taylor, a fair catch called for and made at the 18-yard line. So just over halfway through this opening quarter at AT&T Stadium here in Arlington. This is the first of three Blue Gray All-American Bowls for you in the class of 2023. Next one will be next Monday right here at AT&T Stadium. And then we'll be in Tampa, Florida at Raymond James Stadium, home of the Tampa Bay Bucks, on January the 30th for the third and final of these 2023 All-American Bowls for Blue Gray football. And a new quarterback in there for Team East. They hand off on first down and a nice run behind the left guard. On the carry was Jackson Patterson from Hillsboro High School in Missouri. So Patterson picks up seven, maybe eight on the first play of this drive. Good start to the drive. You always want to stay ahead of the sticks. Anytime you can get positive yards on first down, whether running or passing, but second and two or three, that's always put you in a very, very good situation offensively. Jake Garcia from Donna High School in Texas, 6'2", 200 pounds, has taken over as the quarterback for Team East. And it looks like one of the safeties for Team West is going to have to come to the sideline. Josh Villafranco out of Hannah High School in Texas, jobs over. Second down and short, Team East at its own 26-yard line. And another handoff, a first down carry here for Patterson across the 30-yard line up to the 31. Team East offense looking good early. They were able to get across midfield on their first drive before stalling out and hunting on fourth and one. Their defense got a three and out. And now the Team East offense with a first down to start this drive. Garcia back to throw. We'll check it down to Patterson, looking for a block. And Patterson will run hard across the 30 to about the 33-yard line. Going to gain a couple on that dump off to the right side. And what you saw, you know, pass out to the running back, and you saw five guys from Team West converge to the football and gain tackle. That's what you want, meet at the ball. You want all your guys flying to the football just in case someone misses the tackle, but you want to make that opponent feel your presence every single snap of this game. And so rallying to the football, making a solid tackle, good job by Team West. Jesse Jones and Christian Hando, a couple of the guys who converged and met Patterson at the 33-yard line to make the tackle. Second down, Patterson will get the ball again, and this time he'll be brought down in the backfield. Jackson Patterson gotten a steady dose of the football on this second drive for Team East, but that time brought down at the line of scrimmage by Carson Combs out of Marshall High School in Texas, number 54. Yeah, that play was blown up from the backside. You had the pulling uh, right tackle pulling around to the left side of that run, but the defensive tackle reading his keys came right off his hip, chased it down from the backside, nowhere for that running back to go to make a play. Really impressed with the Team West defense on this drive. Garcia back to throw, hit as he throws, and that pass is caught across the middle by Connor Ackerson. Out of Seneca High School in Missouri. Going to be short of a first down, and so Team East will be forced to punt on its second possession. 
Both defenses forcing punts on the first three possessions of this game. Michael Hartshorn in to punt it away. And it is a good one. And the return here by Jamie Dawson. Dawson will not be able to get forward momentum going. It'll be tackled at the 20-yard line. Ryan Castle, Jesse Holly here at AT&T Stadium. 519 remaining here in this first quarter. Let's check in now with the third member of our broadcast team, Laura Sadler, down on the field. You have a couple of minutes under your belt here playing at AT&T Stadium. Are there any lingering feelings or are you feeling pretty comfortable? Um, I'm pretty excited and I feel comfortable. I've been working with some of the best in the country uh, for a couple of days now and I'm, I'm, I'm ready. And congratulations, you committed to Central Michigan. How has this experience prepared you for the college level? Um, it's just, I play with guys that are all going to the next level and it's, it's really exciting and I can't wait to get there and start balling out with them. Have a great game. Congratulations. Thank you. Let's take it up back to the booth. All right, thanks, Laura. Team West with the possession, but maybe not for long. There's a fumble here on second down and short. Team East believes that they recovered that, and they did. The first mistake of the game is committed by Team West, a fumble recovery by the East at the 30-yard line. To always tell you the number one thing you want to protect in the football field is the ball. That is that that is numero uno, and uh, especially from a running back, you, you want to have the ball high and tight. But sometimes when you have those the mesh in those reads in those zone reads, that mesh sometimes can can, can mess up the timing of you getting the ball, getting it into your chest, three points on it before the defender gets there. It looks like that's what happened on that play. So Ripley Luna will get his first chance as the quarterback for Team East now, and he is set up nicely with the ball starting at the 30-yard line of the West. Still no score with 4.35 remaining here in the first quarter. And a handoff on first down. This is Cartez Williams. And Williams will get inside the 25. Gain of six on that first down carry for Williams. Good blocking at the point of attack for Team East. Cole Rubble, as you see there, number nine, Jesse, for Team East. The other running back right now, along with Ripley Luna, the quarterback. I like the tempo right now that I'm seeing from Team East. They're not getting into a huddle, getting the sign from the sideline. They're all checking their wristbands and they're up at the line of scrimmage and they're going right now. That tempo is working well for them. Hopefully, it can was up some, uh, some points here. Luna with a pass caught. This tackle made out on an island there. The pass was caught by Colby Luna, who is the brother of the quarterback Ripley Luna. One of those guys from Kellogg High School in Idaho, and a nice tackle made defensively by Jamie Dawson to set up third down and one. Yeah, it's not it's not it's not a bad thing to be the brother of a quarterback when you play wide receiver. You. You guys have a little bit of a special connection, and when he's not throwing you the ball, you can kind of get in and say, hey, bro, listen, I need the rock. Let's throw it out here to me right here now, or I'm going to tell mom. You're not usually having to jump on social media. Hey, can anybody come throw to me? Yes. You just walk down the hallway. Here's a big play, third down and one, and a nice keep by Luna. A first down and more, and Luna will score. Touchdown, Team East. Beautifully designed fake and executed to perfection by Ripley Luna. And Team East in front here with 3.35 to play in the first quarter. And here's what happens. On that, on that zone read, you stick it out there, and you're playing off that defensive end. If he stays outside, you hand the ball off to the running back. If he comes down as he's going to make the tackle, then you pull it back up the quarterback, get around the corner. That's why you got to be alignment and assignment sound when you're playing that defensive end spot. He got caught inside. Luna pulled it out. Got a block from his brother down the field for the touchdown. So now the extra point from Kyle Conrardi is up and good. And so with 3.35 left in this first quarter, Team East 
strike it first. They cash in the turnover by Team West. And they looked good doing it, Jesse. Ripley Luna with a great read to keep that football on the 26-yard touchdown run. Team East off to a good start. And I like what you said, Jesse, and I agree with you about their pace. They are not really messing around, getting to the line of scrimmage, making sure their play is called, making sure they're in the right personnel. That's going to pay off as the game wears on because that Team West defense is going to start to get tired having to get back to the line of scrimmage so quickly. And, that's what you want. and then you also want your team uh, to get up there quickly and the defense make a mistake. Communication is not sound. Someone's running off, someone's running on, and then now you find yourself in a situation where you have an advantage at the line of scrimmage on the back end. And you saw on that last play, a guy not being where he's supposed to be, quarterback recognizes it, reads it, pulls the ball, comes around the left side for a touchdown. Team East will kick it away now to Team West, who will look to respond. Team West offensively has punted and lost a fumble. He will kick it deep. Glad to have you with us here inside AT&T Stadium, home of the Dallas Cowboys for the first of three Blue-Gray All-American Bowls here in the class of 2023. Girardi's kick will be out the back of the end zone for a touchback. You'll notice that in these games, we have very good specialists, kickers, punters, long snappers. All of those guys are coming from Cole's Kicking. Anthony Giuliano here on behalf of that organization, always working with those specialists in these Blue Gray All-American Bowls. Some uh, really good ones over the years. I'm a fan of SEC football, and so uh, whenever South Carolina's on, Kai Kruger, their punter, a Blue Gray football alum, Several other guys have gone on to play Division I FBS as a kicker or a punter coming from this game. Here's Team West starting at its own 25, and a handoff goes awry as that is a wonderful play made in the backfield by Team East. Gavin Copenhaver, a linebacker from Louisville Christian Academy with that tackle in the backfield. What you want to see from all the linebackers and receivers? Can you make open field tackles? You know, there was a missed block by a receiver who went right by him. You would hope he get a hat on the hat, and that way now my running back can find those seeds to get up the field. But, you know, guys aren't stationary. They're going to just stand there and let you block them. Got downfield, great open field tackle for a loss. And now Team West is looking at a third and second and long. And they're going to go back to throw. This is Patrick Burke running out of the pocket. And Burke will turn this into a positive play, get up to about the 30-yard line. Going to set up about a third down and five coming up as Burke has tried to turn that into something and got a couple of nice blocks downfield. Yeah, one thing is sometimes as a, defense, as a defensive player, you don't account for the quarterback. Uh, now, unless you have someone who you know coming into the game as a natural runner who's going to run the ball a lot, but when the pocket breaks down and you have a quarterback that can get out and get some, get some positive yardage, you've now made it 11 on 11, and someone missed now gives you the advantage offensively. Here's third down and four. Burke again wants to run, and Team East will hold on to him for dear life and drag him down shy of the 35-yard line. Team West will go three and out and it will be time to punt. Jesse, I'm curious, you're best known as a receiver, of course, in the National Football League. Did you ever play any defense? In high school. What uh, position? I played safety, and my, my thing was interceptions, right? I didn't want to tackle anybody. I just, I just didn't, so I would try to bait quarterbacks into throwing uh, throwing the deep ball, and I would be back there playing center field and intercepting it. But, oh, I maybe should have played a little bit of safety. I might be still playing in the National Football League today. The reason I ask is because I can't imagine there being some, anything more fun than being a linebacker or a safety in a game like this where really your one job is they hand the ball off, you go hit the running back. That's it. Timeout is called here by Team East, I believe. That's who they were pointing to with two minutes remaining in this first quarter. Marquane Taylor back to receive the punt. Team West's offense has been anemic so far. They have not been able to get anything going. Two three and outs and a fumble loss that turned into 
A touchdown for Team East. Here's the punt by Nico. Fair catch by Taylor, and he backpedals down to his keister at the 23-yard line, able to haul it in. And that's where Team East will begin its next possession. You know, that last possession, Team East had their punt return unit on, and then Team West decided they were going to try to go for it on fourth down and maybe even get them to jump off sides. So they banged the timeout and said, let's get the right personnel out there. And in that decision-making, Team West decided, you know what, we're backed up, let's punt the ball away. Would have been an interesting call early on in this game. We saw Team East have a similar conundrum on their first drive, decided to punt it on fourth and one. With the ball around midfield. John Shapin has returned as the quarterback on this drive for Team East. And the pistol on first down, and they're going to run an end around. This again is Woodward, and Woodward this time not going to get quite the same result as he did earlier when he nearly housed one that was uh, eventually called back on a holding. As you see the exchange there between Shapin and Woodward, not a good one. Yeah, this is what happens sometimes in these all-star games. You don't have much time together. So the meshing point of how you're going to toss that ball is going to be a hard toss, a soft toss. It'll be, you know, chest level, eye level. And now it seemed like it got up on the receiver really fast and really hot. And he weren't able to handle it like he did on the first one. And I don't know if you can go back to that bag of tricks anymore now because you've read it twice in the, uh, in the first quarter. But who knows, they may come to it again. Big loss on the play back to the 13-yard line. It's second and 19. Chapin will step up into the pocket and will go down. Sacked on the play back inside the 10-yard line. And Chapin, again, maybe a little indecisive on where he wanted to go with the football. Yeah, we call that a cover sack. Nowhere for the quarterback to go with the football down the field. He's back there. He's dancing. He's moving around. He's trying to hope someone works with him in the scramble jail. But great job by Team West having the proper coverage and the tight coverage downfield. Nowhere for uh, uh, for the quarterback to deliver the football. Got to eat it, take the sack. And now we're looking at third and a country mile for Team East. Officially 24 yards to go. Shapin is just going to stay conservative, throws a screen to the right. And the tackle made out across the 15-yard line. The pass was caught by Nathan Sauls. Well shy of a first down, and so Team East will punt. I want to go back to that first down play for just a second, Jesse. The uh, botched end around by Team East. I think casual fans understand what goes into an offense. Hey, we got to make sure we're all lined up correctly. We know where we're supposed to go. But it's those small intricacies like you were talking about. Do we want a soft toss? Do you want it to be a fast toss? Those are the types of things that you have to practice over and over and over and make sure that you're on the same page offensively in order for a play to end up being successful. Yeah, absolutely. Because you're talking about the handling. It's a different style of handling the football. You know, if a quarterback, if I'm a receiver, I'm usually, you know, the ball being thrown to me. It's coming to me eye, chest level. Now I'm moving in another totally different direction, full speed. And I have to time this thing up with the quarterback. And if the ball comes at me too hot, now I'm, I'm, it's, it's almost like a fast pitch right up on me. And it's difficult for you uh, to corral it in. So sometimes not having a, enough practice time to do it, switching out quarterbacks, sometimes you know, in the beginning of the game it's one thing, in the second quarter it's another thing. And so being able to have that work, uh, uh, that work being done with that, with, with, with that teammate is the difference between it being successful and unsuccessful. It's really good analysis as we are getting ready to start the second quarter. One unique aspect of these games, if you're new to the blue-gray football experience, are the 16-minute quarters. And the first play of the second quarter is a punt by Team East, and it is a good one by Hartshorn. It will bounce inside the 30-yard line, keep rolling, and be stopped at the 25-yard line. Great punt. 57-yard punt by Michael Hortshorn out of uh, Abington Heights High School in Pennsylvania. Boy, what a weapon that is to be able to flip the field like that after Team East struggled on their latest possession. And it looked as if there was some miscommunication with the returners. Normally, you want to have those guys split ball comes right, the guy on the right side takes it. The ball comes left, the guy on the left side takes it. They were standing real close to each other and didn't know who was going to take the ball. It bounced uh, and, and rolled back, and now you start from the 25-yard line. 
and a timeout is going to be called here prior to the first play of this drive. Timeout called by the East. And that is their second charge timeout of the half with 15.48 remaining in this second quarter. 7-0, the East with the lead. It was a 26-yard touchdown run on the quarterback keeper by Ripley Luna. Back in the first quarter on the third possession for Team East. That came after a fumble recovery by the East defense. And for Team West, Coach, uh, Coach Wallace, who's the head coach and the offensive coordinator, they got to get something going right here. You know, the first couple possessions, you're kind of feeling each other out. You're trying to see what you can do, what you can't do. But now you got to get something going. you got to get this offense pumping and rolling. You know, go to those plays that you saw in practice that really worked well. You, you, you want to start off on that first down play getting something positive. Even if it's a quick throw, we call that a long handoff. If it's a hitch route or, or a quick slant, just to get the momentum going, get some get some momentum going uh, uh, for your offense so that you can find some rhythm. This offense hasn't had rhythm all day long, and here it, it, they're with the ball now, so hopefully they can get some. We'll see what they want to do here on first down. They hand off, and just a nice job there by Team East to hold on and not allow for much of a gain. They do get a couple of yards to the 27-yard line on that carry Tyler Ward out of Bishop Louis Riker High School here in Texas. Six foot, 185 pounds. And this is the difference right here, Jesse. You see Team West huddling up. That's the uh, design that Coach Seneca Wallace, the head coach of Team West, has decided to go with. Instead of implementing the armband system of Team East. Second down, throw across the middle, pass broken up. Nice defensive play on the back end as the pass was broken up to bring up third down. Grayson King, the quarterback out of Saxe High School, right here in the DFW Metroplex. But a pretty nice throw there, but a better defensive play. Yeah, bang, bang play, good, solid hit from the safety. As a former receiver, you like to for the receiver to bring in that catch, especially when we know as receivers, you're going to get hit anyway. So I'd much rather get hit and have the reception than get hit and have the incompletion. That was Jordan Foster who made that hit on the last play. And now King will run out of the pocket looking to get the first down, but he's going to be knocked out of bounds short of the line to gain. And it will be fourth down for Team West, and they immediately will bring out the punt team. Yeah, they just can't find it. Really. They're, they're, they're trying to find it. They're trying to deliver some passes. You know, they just can't seem to get that, that, that the ball rolling in their favor offensively. Uh, Coach Wallace, he, he has his hands full today because, you know, I know that we have 16-minute quarters, but it doesn't seem that they can get anything going, you know, getting past the 50-yard line, getting into the opponent's territory. And if you can't do that, you can't win football games. They've really struggled to get first downs in this game so far. We'll take a look at Mark Wayne Taylor back to return at the 25-yard line. This punt by Mac Maiko. That is a line drive bullet. Taylor muffs it initially, picks it up at the 19 and will just barely retain possession as he had a couple of guys bearing down on him. Good coverage on the play by Patrick Kramer out of Lyons Township High School in Illinois. Really able to get there along with his teammate Nathan Tomlinson out of Blanco High School in Texas. You see Ken Stills talking with Taylor as uh, they walk down the sideline about what should have uh, probably transpired differently on that play. And there's, as a punt returner, you know, there's a way that the ball kind of drops. When it's, when it's flipping, it's always going to drop to your left. When it's end over end, always going to sail back to your right. So as a returner, you've got to kind of get underneath that football and be able to corral it. Well, first down for Team East, the handoff to Jackson Patterson. Patterson will get to the 22-yard line. Gain of a couple there on this first play of the drive. Jake Garcia has returned as the quarterback for Team East. 
just underway in the second quarter. Seven to nothing to East with the lead. Their only touchdown came on a 30 yard drive, capped off by a 26 yard run by Ripley Luna. East not going quite as quickly here with Garcia as the quarterback. Taking a couple of extra looks at that wristband, asking Patterson to double check him. And a fumble. The ball's loose and the West got there first. Team East has responded in kind with a lost fumble of its own and Team West knocking on the door to try and tie this game early in the second quarter. You know, that play from the start, there was a lot of confusion, quarterback, running back, you know, talking to each other in the backfield. And it just felt like, you know, we're not on the same page, didn't look smooth, didn't look like they knew what they were doing. And again, when you're running those RPOs, when you're running and that quarterback is putting the ball, that mesh point, are you keeping it? Am I pulling it? And you have to understand what's happening. And it looks like right there, the, the running back thought one thing, the quarterback thought something else, and they both went the wrong way. Ball comes out, team was with the recovery, just what they've needed. They've struggled to get the ball anywhere down the field. Now they're in their territory, and they fumbled the football. They do recover it at the 15-yard line. This has been tough to watch for these offenses so far. Landon Stevens, by the way, was the defensive player for Team West who made the recovery on the fumble. And uh, not a good start to this drive for Team West. It'll be second down and 11. Team West with the consistent, the consistent shooting themselves in the foot. You're in great territory. You know, you're right on the cusp. Uh, you're in the red zone right now. You're on the cusp of being uh, near the goal line, and you turn the football over on first down. I mean, you fumble the football on first down. Grayson King, the quarterback, hands it off on second down. And Team East converges to the football quickly, and on the stop was Chance Kerr out of Dodge City High School in Kansas. There's not a lot of room to run around that left side. It'll be third down and nine. And when teams get down in the red zone, we got what we call high red zone and low red zone. Anytime you get near the 20, that's high red zone. Near the 10, that's low red zone. But the space is condensed. The defense doesn't have to worry about going back because it's out of bounds. So everything is much more tight and condensed inside. Big third down play here. King back to throw, pressure comes. He escapes off to his right and will just tuck it away and run it. And is gonna be knocked out of bounds at around the five yard line. That's very close to the marker. I believe he's gonna be short and it's gonna be fourth down and now Team West with a decision to make. King made his mind up pretty early there, Jesse. He was gonna take off and run. The tackle made by Silent Young out of West Memphis High School in Arkansas. And Team West now with a decision to make. Looks like the decision has been made. They're gonna go for it. And I wouldn't mind having something with King using the athleticism, being on the run, being a run option as well as a pass option. We got a timeout right here by Team East. Didn't like the look that they had all the timeout. Want to get it corrected by the defense. It's a timeout called by Team East. 12-20 remaining here in this second quarter. 7-0 the East with the lead for the moment. Team West, though, threatening inside the red zone after a turnover. Uh, they have not been able, even on this drive, Jesse, to get a first down. That's been the elusive thing for Team West is just to be able to move the sticks so far in this football game and give a lot of credit to Team East and their defensive coordinator, Ken Stills, has done a fabulous, fabulous job implementing this defense in a short period of time. And it looks like Team West has decided to try for some points here. You like the decision? I, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. You want to get some points. You want something positive to happen for your football team after that turnover. You don't want to risk it. But some points here is definitely needed for Team West. So the field goal, just a chip shot up and through from Samuel Buckner, the kicker out of Statesville High School in North Carolina. And Team West put some points on the board here with 12-14 to play in the second quarter. It's now the East 7 and the West 3. So not quite what Team West 
would have hoped for, starting with the ball inside the 15-yard line, but they do come away at least with a field goal and cut it to a four-point deficit. You know, that's what you call a win-win for both sides. When, when you turn the ball over in your own territory, you give an opportunity for the opposing team offense to come out there and your defense is backed up. Offensively, you want to go and take that turnover and turn it into a touchdown for points. Uh, but defensively, whenever you're forced back in the action from a turnover, if you can hold a team to three points, that's a win for your defense. So, you know, Coach Wallace and Team West got some points on the board. So they've been struggling all day. But also Coach Bell and his defense were able to say, hey, Bend, but don't break. I know that we've been put in a very peculiar situation where we don't want to be, but let's just lock it down and make sure that we're not giving up a touchdown and you still hold a four-point lead. So Marquane Taylor, Tyrell Trevino will go back to return the kickoff now from Buckner. He just hit the field goal for Team West. Buckner sends one a couple of yards deep in the end zone. That will go into the end zone for a touchback. And Team East will start at its own 25-yard line. Well, as is perhaps customary in these blue-gray All-American Bowls and really in any uh, all-star game or uh, game such of this nature, the defense is ruling the day at least so far. So last year, Jesse, we had three really compelling games. All were decided by seven points or less. And they were some really exciting football games from start to finish. Hope's still high for this one, for the offenses to get a little bit of rhythm. Team East will have Ripley Luna in as the quarterback. He led Team East to a touchdown on his only drive so far. Wants to throw on first down, and will take off and run, and lowers the shoulder to about the 28-yard line for a gain of three. You know, i got to give Gus, Gus Bell some credit. We've been doing this game for a while. I really enjoy these uniforms. You know, uh, Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, had a saying that if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you play good. If you play good, they pay good. And I can tell you one thing right now. These uniforms have both of these teams, both Team East and Team West looking real, real good today. I had a similar saying in college, dress well, test well. But I like Dion's a little better. Yeah, that was a great touch take. Here's a drop back by Luna, and Team West is all over him in a hurry. Luna just trying to get as much as he can. We'll get out to the 30-yard line. It'll be third down and five. Did you have, like, a special, like, test-taking Outfit? Not at all. No? No. Because college think... is a lot of just, I roll over, I'm throwing on those sweats I had on yesterday, a t-shirt, and I'm going to drag myself down to my geology class for the next two hours. No, I, it was a saying. I mean, it was better in uh, in theory, not in practice. Yes. There was a lot of prayer for me doing test time yes. at the University of North Carolina. Third down and five and a big play for Team East trying to keep the drive going. They'll hand off. And a nice tackle made out in the open field on Cole Rubel, the running back. Tackle made out in space by Maverick Neustadter. Canyon Del Oro High School in Arizona. Really nice tackle to put an end to the drive. And Team West defensively, they've been kind of outside of that 30-yard uh, drive that they have and they get the touchdown. They've been pretty stout as well. Another stop and forcing a punt for Team East. You hope that now the communication is there on the back end. Again, two returners standing really close to one another. You kind of want to see them spread out a little bit. Now they're spreading out some. But you hope to get a solid return, and hopefully for Team West, if you get that return, now you've got points on the board. You kind of start seeing your offense pick it up a little bit, and maybe Coach Wallace will open up the passing game and see if he can't spread out around the field. Here's the punt by Hartshorn. Very high, spiraling punt. Fair catch called for and made by Jamie Dawson out of Walden Grove High School in Arizona. Decent starting field position for Team West out at their 32-yard line, just under 10 minutes to play in this opening half of football. I'm not going to lie. In this type of game, I would never call for it. I don't really see the point. Yeah, I would never call for it. I would try to return everything. Would you risk the fumble? Would I would try to return yeah. everything. 
everything I would try to return. Every 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 opportunity I would try to return it and get some positive yard. Now, if I fumble, maybe not again after that. But initially, I'm definitely trying to return it. I don't think anybody would fault you for that, partner. Here we go, Team West, back to throw on first down, deep out to the right side, pass drop. Good looking throw from Aiden Armenta, but not able to connect with the receiver, Eric Miller from Valley Christian High School in Arizona. It's gonna be second and 10. Yeah, you can tell Coach Wallace says that we gotta get something going. Got to get the passing game going, get some chunk yards because we're not getting it on the ground. So try to get some of those chunk yards, but incomplete pass on first down. You find yourself at second and 10. Now you kind of almost got to pass the football to give yourself some more uh, opportunities. Instead, they're going to hand off to Brennan Hills. And not much. It'll be third down and about eight. And it's... One of my least favorite calls in football there, Jesse, the second and 10 handoff. You're playing for third and long. Let's go back to Eric Miller for just a second. He was the intended receiver on that first down play. He's here with his teammate, Adam Bradford, this week in Arlington. Both of those guys from Valley Christian High School in Arizona. And both of them have been working with Doug Powell, former LSU quarterback back in the 80s. Powell's been uh, training them and uh, getting them ready for the recruiting season. Here's a pass across the middle, and Armenta again puts it on his receiver, Devin Matthews, but Matthews unable to squeeze it. And the incompletion will set up fourth down. You got it. For, for Devin Matthews coming across the field right there, you got to make that completion. That's, that, that's one of those where the ball hits you right in your hands. It's third down. Offensively, you're struggling. Your quarterback trusts you coming across the middle. You want to make that completion right there. Big-time players make big-time plays in big-time games. And when you're called upon, and I'm always extra critical for the wide receivers, ball hits you in both of your hands, that's supposed to be a completion. Can't have it. Now your team's punting. End over end punt. It's going to be angled away from Taylor, and Taylor is going to rue the day that he didn't field this because Team West able to save it from being a touchback and down it inside the one. What a play on special teams as you take another look at Taylor just saying, no, I'm not going to go over there and get in front of that. And it turned out to cost his team about 25 yards in field position. What a great play by Team West. Yeah, you had the, you had the gunner up top, number 29, Nicholas Torres, and him being able to continue to run down the football field, never giving up on the play, was able to down it one yard line. Now you put your team in a position where a lot of things can happen down here. If you're holding in the end zone, that's a safety, a sack in the end zone, that's a safety, but now your defense has an advantage and they can look at the quarterback. We're gonna throw on first down and that pass wobbly and incomplete. Not really sure who it was intended for. It's gonna be second down and 10. We've already seen Team West with several tackles for loss. A tackle for loss here could mean two points like the intended receiver that last time was David Woodward from Radford City High School in Virginia, but really no chance for that pass to be completed. Team East, you can tell Jesse looks very tentative here. Yeah. And a lot of times you want to run a play that gets you off the cusp of the end zone. Just get something going forward so that you now you have a little bit more room. Dangerous. They do hand off to Taylor, and he just barely escapes out of the end zone, tackled at the one. And it's going to be third down and ten. And you're right, Jesse. This is at this point a drive you're just hoping to survive if your team east. And that's the dangers of running a lot of that shotgun, especially running the running back out of the shotgun, because normally you want to get him coming downhill, but he's already starting six and a half yard back when he gets the when he gets the handoff. So you're standing in the middle of the end zone when you get the handoff by the time you get the line of scrimmage, that line of scrimmage has been recreated by the defense and it doesn't leave much room for you to have success. They're gonna throw, pump fake, trying to get out of the end zone. And the pass is Ooh. caught down the field. What a play. The pass is caught by Gunnar Williams, number 19 out of Porter High School in Texas. And what a job right here, Jesse, by John Chapin 
to first escape a safety and then get rid of the ball just in time to get it downfield to Williams. Talking about having awareness, understanding where he's at, creating a little bit more time in the pocket with the scramble to the right. And now your receivers are helping you out down the field by running the scramble drill. Defensive backs lost sight of the guys behind them, delivered a great pass to the receiver, got out of the end zone for a huge play, huge first down for Team East. So they keep the drive going here with seven and a half to play in the second quarter. Shapin, some happy feet in the pocket. Now we'll take off and run and be tackled at about the 32 yard line. Gain of about five for Shapin just escaping out of the pocket with nobody open downfield. And as we take another look, he actually had Taylor as running back open out of the backfield who was jumping around and hollering for the football, but uh, Shapin never saw him. You know, for a defense, plays like that, when you scramble out of the end zone, you work so hard, it's, it's third down, it's third and long, you got them backed up, and then the quarterback gets outside of the pocket, broken tournament, and have a play down the field. That can be demoralizing for a team who hasn't had much energy today. Hand off Taylor, and Taylor is going to be brought down in the backfield. What a play made by Team West, Tristan Black from Glen Rose High School in Texas. Just coming off unblocked and made a really nice open field tackle. You know, Tristan Black says, I see your demoralizing Jesse Holly, and I'll bring a little bit of intensity. That's what you want from your from your from your linebackers. You want people coming downhill, being able to run the running back down and make open field tackles. This defense is playing really hard despite not getting much from their offense. Trying to get off the field here on third and ten. Shapin lost the Ooh. handle. I believe they're going to call that a fumble, and Team West with the recovery at the 20-yard line. As we take another look, Shapin just not able to keep a handle on that football. And they do call it a fumble and a Team West recovery, the second lost fumble of the ball game for Team East. Yeah, that's a weird play. It looked like, he, you know, he goes to throw the bubble screen, and the ball just slips out of his hand as he goes to release it. No one touched him, no one hit him. Uh, just sometimes that happens when you go to sometimes even grip the ball really hard, throwing it and it slips out of your hand. Another break for Team West. See if they'll be able to capitalize on it. Second down and about five. Back to throw is Armenta out to the right side and a pass is caught, but it's gonna be a big loss on the play. Jordan Neeson, the running back, made the catch, Jesse, but uh, it might have been better just to have that one fall incomplete. Yeah, absolutely. But again, you're talking about not only with the pass kind of you know behind them, but the defensive back coming up, making an open field tackle. That is so critical, so crucial. When that's your guy and all you have to do is defend that guy, but you got a lot of space to defend, being able to come up, secure the tackle, bring them down for a loss, that's what you want to see from your defensive back. Team West continues to struggle moving the football. Armenta has the running back, Jordan Neeson. To his right, back to throw Armenta. Hit as he throws that ball up for grabs. And did he catch it? Incomplete, say the officials. A really nice effort there by Adam Bradford, the tight end, to come back to that football and try to get underneath it. But the incompletion will set up fourth down and Team West will be forced to try a field goal here. It'll be a 40 yard attempt from the right hash. Team West has been given many opportunities today to have, to turn into some points and they just haven't been able to do it. And hopefully you, you can make this field goal right here. And it's off the left, upright and in. A doink put in by Samuel Buckner to cut the lead to one for Team East. How about that, Jesse? I don't, I don't think we've seen that yet at a blue-gray All-American Bowl. Well, little English on that right there. That's the way he drew it up. Off the left, upright, and for a three. Steph Curry style. <laughs> and 4 17 Still left to be played here in the second quarter. Seven to six now. Team East with the lead, but uh, it's been the turnovers by Team East that have left the door open for the West. Fortunately for Team West, Jesse now 0 for 2 in the red zone. They just have not been able to generate anything offensively, even when they've been set up with good field position. 
Yeah, when you get into that money zone, that red zone, you want to come away with touchdown. Field goals are nice. Touchdowns are better. And they've been gifted two opportunities to go out there and extend and, and to get some points on the board and, and take a lead in this game. They've come up short, and they're still they're still uh, uh, trailing in this game, 7-6. You, you, you hope in, in maybe the second half adjustment you'll try to find some more things that they can get their offense up and running. So Buckner getting ready to kick it deep. To Marquane Taylor. And Taylor will back up seven yards deep in the end zone and just send his right knee to the ground for a touchback. Would you bring that one out, Justin? I'm bringing everything out. <laughs> Eight yards deep, nine yards deep. If I got it out, if I can get my hands on it, I'm bringing it out. I'm bringing every punt out. I'm bringing every kickoff. I'm bringing every kickoff back. This is an all star game. This right here is where you got to make your mark. And, uh, you know, bringing it out, there may be a lane that opens up, but I'm, I'm giving myself an opportunity. I would love to see it. But, uh, Mark Wayne Taylor thought better of it at least that time. And Team East will start with the ball at its own 25-yard line. Jake Garcia will be the quarterback from Donna High School right here in Texas. A lot of Texas kids in this game here today on both sides of the football. Here's a handoff to Jackson Patterson, and Patterson will be demolished in the backfield. That play made quickly there by Carson Combs. We've called his name several times. The linebacker, defensive lineman out of Marshall, Texas. He's a tough guy to stop up front. Yeah, the guard with the pull, he just followed right behind him. He didn't got that was supposed to block him. Making another play in the backfield to make team ace second and long. Garcia in the shotgun with two receivers to the right. He's going to throw to the right quickly. That pass is caught. Tyrell Trevino with his first catch of the afternoon. One of the yards after the catch to the 29-yard line. So when all is said and done, eight yards to set up third down and six. We haven't seen any, either team take shots down the field. Normally, we'll see a couple shots down the field. Both of these teams have been very conservative in their offensive play call, running the ball a lot, uh, haven't really taken many shots down the field. I'm not sure we've seen a play over 20 yards yet. And a handoff on third and six. Very conservative play call by Team East. And Tyler Lawrence out of LBJ High School in Texas will be stopped after a very short game, it'll be fourth and three and time to punt for Team East. Interesting decision by Rodney Beasley, the offensive coordinator for Team East to give the ball to Lawrence on third down and six. Now Team East will be punting it back to Team West who still will try and get their first lead of the game. A good return right here will help the momentum for Team West. Here's the punt by Hartshorn. A little bit of a shorter punt this time. It hops up to Dawson, and Dawson will start the return. He'll get across the 40. That is a good start to this next possession for Team West. Jamie Dawson, the return man from Walden Grove High School in Arizona, gives his team a little spark. This is their best starting field position other than the two that started uh, because of turnovers. And I know that we're always looking for the big punt return, the, you know, uh, take it to the house type return. But a good return, if you can average nine yards of return, that puts you in the National Football League, that, that puts you at the top of the league. So a great return right there for Team East, I'm sorry, excuse me, for Team West to get their offense started. With the handoff on first down to Chris Pena from Hannah High School in Texas. Pena across the 45 to the 47 yard line for a gain of four. Good start to the drive for Team West. They have not been able to win first down often so far today. So for them to set up second down and six has to feel like a successful moment for Coach Seneca Wallace in this West offense. Back to throw, across the middle, pass caught for a first down by Christian Gamboa. 
Big tight end from far San Juan Alamo High School down the Rio Grande Valley. Good looking throw that time from Team West's Patrick Burt. Yeah, good pitch and catch right there. Tight, tight end settled in. Receiver settled in right behind the linebacker. He read it as a shallow out route came outside, delivered the ball. Huge play for Team West. Burke, the quarterback from the Episcopal School of Dallas, right here in the area. Flag down on this play as Burke will be hit out of bounds at about the 33 yard line. But we'll have to wait and see what this penalty flag is. It's a holding against the offense. That play is going to be coming back. One thing we can say, Jesse, in this game is. There have been very few penalties against either team. A couple of costly ones. There was a very consequential holding penalty on the first drive for Team East that brought back a big play. But other than that, both teams have played a clean game so far. Yeah, absolutely. But you don't want the holding penalties, right? In the first quarter, we saw in the reverse, holding play brought back a 51-yard run. And then now in this play right here, you got some momentum. You finally got some things going for you. And you take two steps forward and you take three steps back with a holding penalty uh, for your team on first down. First and 20 back at midfield. Burt, deep to left side. That pass is incomplete. Broken up at the very last moment. Jack Merquan was the intended receiver. And a good play back in coverage. Take another look. This was a well-thrown ball by Burt. Just a really nice defensive play by Alec Guzman out of Rivera High School in Texas. Your defensive back coaches always teach the DBs play through the catch. A lot of times, even though the receiver may have the catch, rake your arms through his hands with the ball, and as you're going down, continue to fight because what can happen is if you don't control it all the way to the ground, ball pops out, incomplete pass. Second and 20. Burke again deep left side. This pass a little short. Intended for Cole Krakow, San Marcos Academy here in Texas. It's going to be third down and 20. And it was a really promising start to the drive for Team West. In danger of stalling out here. Yeah, the defensive end number 52, uh, Anthony Myers, he's getting pressure off that left side. The quarterback couldn't step up in the pocket, so that ball drifted a little bit. Instead of him being able to put a little bit of oof on it, a little bit of a little bit of you know spin on the football to get it down the field, not because of that pressure by Myers, he created off the off the left edge. Team West will call for a timeout here, Jesse. It's their first charge timeout of the half. They want to talk over third down and 20 just a bit more here. This was a Good start to the drive. Started with a good punt return by Jamie Dawson. Patrick Burke with a couple of completions, but a big holding penalty has backed up Team West. It's third down and 20. And I can promise you Coach Wallace is looking through his sheet, his play calling sheet. There isn't a play on there for third and 20. <laughs> there is. Most coaches don't have third and 20 football plays. That's why you want to stay ahead of the sticks. Give yourself manageable situations that when you get to third down, you're somewhere around, you know, third and three, third and four, third and six at the most. But to your point earlier, you know, Team West, they finally got something going. And the, the killer, the drive killer was that holding penalty. And coaches just hate those drive killers because you finally get that momentum. And now it's brought back and you have to fight from being first and 20. And they're on, they're on first and 20 plays. They're on second and 20 plays. They're on third and 20 plays in any coach's offensive playbook. So you find yourself now looking up and saying, how are we going to complete these passes for 20 yards? And that can sometimes be dangerous if the ball is tipped or, or you force the ball into a receiver. Big play right here, depending on what Team West is able to do. It might be four down territory. Burke across the middle, and that pass incomplete. Cole Krakow again across the middle was the intended receiver, but it's going to be fourth down and 20, and... Team West is going to be forced to punt here. You pick up 10 of that, maybe 12 of that, you think about going for it on fourth down, but fourth and 20 from midfield feels like a good opportunity to punt. And hopefully now Team West can, on this punt, back them up again and make Team East have to drive the field with a minute and 22 
with one, a minute 27 with one timeout left. So this is going to be a crucial punch. You want to you want to back them up, make them travel the distance. And the punt will be fielded by Taylor with a fair catch at the four-yard line. So a good punt. Taylor making the choice to field that inside the five instead of see if it might bounce into the end zone. And that's exactly what Team West was hoping for there, Jesse, backing up Team East inside the five. Make those guys travel the distance up the field. Your defense is playing pretty good for you today. They've been stout. They've been strong. They've been but haven't broken. They give up the early seven points. But since then, they haven't given up much, much else. The offense isn't helping you well for Team West. But defense has been very, very strong. And if you can hold them, go into halftime, be able to regroup, you're down one point, and hopefully you can put together something in the second half that gives you a little bit better offense so you can go out there and score some points. Both defenses have played really well outside of the Ripley Luna 26-yard touchdown run. The defenses have completely ruled it. Luna throwing out of his own end zone, pass incomplete. Intended for Cartez Williams, the running back out of the backfield. It'll be second down and 10, and a good hit by Caleb Anaya out of Harlingen South High School here in Texas. Make sure that Williams did not make that catch. Yeah, Luna had to get rid of that ball pretty quickly. Linebacker was coming in on him, unblocked linebacker, free hit on him, standing in the middle of the end zone. So he wasn't ready to throw, but he got it out in enough time where he wasn't sacking and giving up a safety. David Williams, Brady Roblin, a couple of the guys up front on the offensive line here for Team East. They're going to hand off to Williams. Cartez Williams will get out of the end zone, but not much else. Going to be tackled at around the line scrimmage. Gatson and Kellogg combining on the stop. And it will be third down and long, and a timeout is called by Team West to try and preserve some of this clock. Team West not wanting to be done putting points on the board here in the opening half. Currently trailing seven to six. And they have one timeout left. It's going to be third down and ten for Team East. You know, here's those moments in the game where coaches are playing a little bit of chess because it's third down and ten. Now, in the back of your mind, you're saying, well, if we're going to if we're going to kind of do something with this football, you want to throw it. But if it's an incompletion, now Team West doesn't have to use a timeout. So you're probably going to see a run play right here. If they get some yardage, great. They get a first down, even better. But if they don't, the clock runs, it stays, it stays running, and now Team West has to bang their, their last and final timeout before they get the punt return. But that, that's the cat and mouse game that you'll see coaches play. Uh, you're most likely, if you're, if you're a smart coach, you're probably going to run right here and hope for the first down. But if not, Give yourself a little bit more cushion, a little bit more room so that your punter isn't standing with his heels on the back of the end zone. There's a little bit more room to step up and get that punt away uh, before the half. I want to come back to that conversation after this play, Jesse. I think you bring up a lot of really good and interesting points. Third down and 10. Luna is in the shotgun, and they are going to throw. And Luna will run it up the middle looking for the 14-yard line, and he's going to be brought down right around there with a penalty flag as well. We take another look. You get a great look there of Luna in the pocket, just making the quick decision to take off and run. The tackle was made by Jackson Kellogg out of Legacy High School in North Dakota, but we'll have to wait and see what the penalty flag is about. The players on Team East near the referees, they're clapping like it's against Team West, and if it is, that's a costly penalty. You give them the first down. It's a personal foul that they call right there, 15 yard penalty. So they go from having third and 10 being backed up on their own end zone to a personal foul. I think, I think hit to the head, uh, maybe a little bit, you know, type situation on the quarterback. It gives a 15 yard penalty and gives them a new fresh set of downs. Now going back to the clock conversation, Jesse, you, know, you articulated so well sort of the pros and cons of run versus pass on that third down. We see so often, especially in the National Football League, coaches just completely botch those situations. What is that about? Is it a lack of preparation? Is it a, a nervousness in the moment with pressure? Um, we've seen that so often. I think about Nathaniel Hackett uh, early on in his tenure with the Denver Broncos this year in his first year as a head coach, just looking 
completely like a deer in the headlights in those types of situations. Mike McCarthy has suffered from that, some as the Cowboys head coach. What is that? Is it a lack of preparation? What do you see there as, as kind of being the major inhibitor of good clock management in football? You know, a lot of times you have so much happening in this game. You got you got guys running on and off the field. You're trying to get plays called in, substitution called in. You're trying to handle all these different things. And some coaches, even like Mike McCarthy, he's a, he's a standing around head coach, not an offensive coordinator, not an offensive coordinator. But at times, you just kind of lose the sense of what's happening around you. And you look up and you go, oh, snap, I should have called a timeout. Oh, snap, why am I holding on to these timeouts? And so, you know, you just have a lapse in judgment. Uh, you, we, we put a lot of onus on these coaches. And as we should, they get paid a ton of money. But at the end of the day, we must not forget that they're human too. And at times, they sometimes have brain farts. We don't, we don't want to admit that they should have them, but they have brain farts too. Uh, and especially when it comes from our team, we're like, how can you do that? It happens all across the National Football League. You don't want to see it, but at the end of the day, uh, mistakes happen. You just hope it doesn't happen in those crucial moments of the game that we've seen this year in the National Football League. 21 seconds left here for Team East to try to do something. They do have one actually out of timeouts now. The throw to the sideline is caught. And Cooper Morris will get out of bounds to stop the clock. Receiver from Lubbock Cooper High School here in Texas. That is a first down with 13, actually now 15 seconds. They put a couple of seconds back up on the board. So if Team East could get this to the 50, maybe to the west 45-yard line, you might think about the possibility of sending everybody deep for a Hail Mary at the end of the half. And Team West has to know it. I got to defend the sideline. They're trying to get the ball out quick to the sideline to stop the clock. Luna's going back to throw. Can't take a sack. Going to step up in the pocket. Now run it himself. Penalty flag is down as Luna goes out of bounds at around the West 45-yard line. But we'll have to wait and see what this penalty is about. Yeah, this is going to be a crack, illegal crack back block uh, on number seven. That's kind of been outlawed in football, being able to come back into the play uh, so that, that crackback block is one of those that they just kind of wanted to get away from, protecting the defenseless uh, defender from concussions, from injury. So this play stand is probably going to be a uh, legal crackback block, and it's going to go back 15 yards. We got a really good look at that on our replay. 15 years ago, that's a great play. Nowadays, it just does not have a spot in the game of football. And rightfully so. Yeah. I mean, rightfully no so. This is this is a very violent football. I mean, football is a very violent game. And, you know, it's violent when you're going face-to-face -face with one another. It's even more violent when you don't see a guy coming and he's cracking back into you. And especially with the concussion that, are you know, are happening, you know, all across this league. Uh, I, I have friends who've dealt with a lot of concussions throughout their time. So that play not being allowed anymore, I'm totally fine with that because you want to protect the athlete from this violent game, from the aspects of this violent game. Yeah, no question, we're really well said. Final play of the half here, Patterson will be brought down at the 37 yard line and that will do it for the first half. Here from AT&T Stadium, the opening class of 2023 Blue Gray All-American Bowl is halfway over here at AT&T Stadium, the East leading the West, seven to six. We'll rejoin you for the start of the third quarter here on the Impact Football Network.
Ryan Stills with me, another NFL veteran, but today is going to be the head coach of the East. So far, you've had success in this games, but believe it or not, you've only had two days with all of these kids. How have you managed to pull off this type of chemistry? Oh, well, that, that's tough. But what we do, what I try to do is, is I try to have the guys uh, introduce themselves to three other guys and get to know them. And I, I try to have this little quiz game. It says, I'm going to come and ask you where this guy's from, what position he plays. And we, we try to get to know each other because that's part of the deal. And I keep telling them, everybody's not going to go to college. Everybody's not going to go to the pros. But that one guy might be a CEO somewhere, and he might give you a job. So, so let's network. And I even do it with the parents. And we try to build that family atmosphere It is because it is tough. Only six hours, three hours a day. And some of these kids have came from programs where we're talking foreign to them. When I talk about cover two or a cog block or a twist game, they look, look at us. And you know they always shake their head yes, but we know they don't know. Uh, but it's a great challenge. But I think me and both Coach Wallace, we know how to simplify things. We know that simple is probably the easiest way. Uh, there's an acronym in the NFL, K-I-S-S, keep it simple, stupid, you know. And, and that's what we try to do. We try to keep it simple for the kids so they can react. And either way, win or lose, this is a great experience for them. And you've seen a lot of success. Talk about that, That what you've seen here. Uh, yeah. So my philosophy is, is, like I say, is keep it simple. And I think when Seneca first joined us, uh, he came here with that NFL mind. And sometimes it was overwhelming for the kids. So, I, again, I try to keep it simple and build that family atmosphere. Make sure everybody's having a good time and enjoying themselves. And, uh, and just letting the kids play. Go out there and play and have fun. And when, when you have a chance to do that, there's going to be great success. Now, we've turned the ball over twice a day, and that's why they have the three points or the six points they have. Otherwise, you know, it should be 7-0 and probably a lot more because we've been pinned back with a long field the entire game. So when we go in here at halftime. We're going to continue to kid, tell the kids, play hard, keep it simple. Don't think, react, just have some fun. Well, thank you for developing not only great players, but great men who turn into professional players or CEOs, like you said. Without a doubt. Thank you so much. And we, we want these guys to go out to the, the community and impact the community in a positive way. And that's part of our job as coaches. All right. Well, good luck in the second half. Thank you. That does it here for Ken Stills. We'll be right back. Grace's old smaller heater rather than a fighter for the honor of his father. Nails to his head, triggers to his finger, memories on the honor, girl, the yellow on the honor, linger. Well, Ken Stills, Memories It's been a long time coming. He never amounted to nothing. Every fear, or like a cloud above him. Every struggle had become amplified but Known as the lover Just because he had no fight I've got Seneca Wallace with me, NFL veteran who played with the Seahawks and Packers, but today is serving as head coach of the West. You guys have been battling in this game, but have failed so far to get a touchdown. What will be your message in the locker room to change that? 
Just execution. I mean, it, that's what we talked about all week is executing the little things. And right now, we're not catching the ball. We're not getting up to the second level in our run game. And, uh, you know, we're not getting off the field on third down on defense. We had an opportunity down here backed up to get him off the field or maybe even a safety, but we didn't execute and got him out. So we just got to settle down, fine tune the details. Win or lose, this really is still a great opportunity for these kids. What does this afford them? Well, it affords them an opportunity at the next level. You know, uh, the eye in the sky don't lie. We always talk about that. You know, you want to put good film out there, we got to execute the little things. That's tackling, executing on special teams. Maybe you find your niche on some college on special teams. Offensively, uh, I think the plays are there for us. And again, they have to execute. Those offensive players are looking to go to the next level. You got to execute. You got to do the little things right. We thank you for your time and good luck in the second half. Thank you. Let's take it back up to you guys. AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, the site of today's class of 2023 Blue Gray All-American Bowl, 7-6 to six East with the lead at the half as we get you ready for the start of the third quarter. Team East will be kicking it off to Team West. The only touchdown scored by Ripley Luna, a 26-yard run from the quarterback to give the East a 7 to nothing lead. Back in the first quarter, that came after a West turnover that gave the East the ball at the West 30-yard line. And then two turnovers by the East, both leading to field goals for Team West. And that was the scoring in the first half of play. The defense is playing really well. And the kickoff to start this third quarter is booted out the back of the end zone by Kyle Conrardi, the kicker out of... Dubuque High School in Iowa. So Team West will start first and 10, going left to right in the gray jerseys at their 25-yard line. And Jesse, we were talking about it, just sort of uh, laughing at the break. You know, all-star games like this, you look at the score <laughs> seven to six at half, you're kind of just like, oh, okay, well, that doesn't seem like that much of an exciting game, but the defenses are all-stars too, yeah. and they played like it in the first half. You know, absolutely. They're, they're, this this team you saw on both sides of the ball defensively tackle, rally to the football, make great open field tackles, get after the quarterback, not give up big plays. And so got to give them some credit as well. Patrick Burke will start as the quarterback here for Team West, and his first pass is caught by Christian Gamboa, the 6'3 receiver from down in South Texas. A good start to the drive for Team West. They'll set up second down and four. Yeah, and when you've been struggling all day offensively, you want to come out and you want to make simple throws, simple completions, just so that the, it's like it's like making a layup or having a free throw when you're shooting the night is off. You want to get easy completions so that you can kind of get something going for your offense. They'll hand off on second down, and that'll be a first down carry. For Brennan Hills. Or not. Yellow flag on the play. This is in that area of holding. Looks like this one will be coming back after a positive game for Team West. Now this was, in some ways, what hurt Team West in the first half. They had a drive in which they were pushing it down the field and then a big holding call. Oh, it's a face mask. Yeah. Excuse me. Okay. Face mask by Team East. 15-yard penalty. And Team West has now got some momentum. I think maybe on their own volition have passed the team's 50-yard line into their territory for the first time today. I think the only other time was on the drive that I was just mentioning in which uh, they then had a holding penalty that moved them back to midfield, so they didn't spend long in Team East territory. Now Burke back to throw will just take off and run and doing a nice job weaving his way through traffic and has a first down to the Team East 36-yard line, gain of 11. And look at Patrick Burke providing a spark for this Team West offense. Now, this is what all-star game's about, moving the football, guys making plays. You're able now to get into some scoring, potentially scoring territories. That's what you want to see in these all-star games. I get it. The defense are fine, and defense is all good and well. We want to see points and touchdowns. And that's what Team West is aiming for here to try and take their first lead of the game. Burke with a delayed handoff and a good carry inside the 35-yard line. Zay Cartwright got his first carry of the game from Shelbyville High School in Texas. Gain of about three. And Team West, what they're doing is they're staying ahead of the change. Everything that they're doing is positive gain. They are, you know, the penalty that they had was against 
uh, team E, so they got the 15-yard penalties. But they're methodically moving the ball down the field, getting ahead of the change on first downs and leaving themselves in, in favorable situations. Burke has Cartwright to his left, hands it to Cartwright. And Cartwright will be taken down after a short game, got to the 31-yard line, and it's now third down and five. Team West has struggled on third down today, but Jesse, a lot of that has been due to the fact they've been backed up, third and eight, third and nine. This, a more manageable third down and five. This is where you want to be. For for offensive play caller, you like this third and three, third and four, third and five, because now you can potentially still run the football. You can pass the football intermediate, short, or long. It really puts the defense on their heels because you have so many options. Burke will throw to the left. Pass is caught for a first down. Down around the 20-yard line, Jack Merquan made catch from Riggs High School in South Dakota, being targeted by the Missouri Valley Conference and made a nice catch just in front of the defender there for a first down. For an offense that's been anemic all football game, you'll like to see them coming out of the half and having some spirit, having some life, and being able to drive the ball down the fo uh, football field. Now, I don't know if this is going to result in, in points, but it has a really good feel to it, a feel that we haven't had from this offense all game. This is their third trip to the red zone. As Jesse said, the first of their own volition. And a pass here across the middle will be caught in a tight window by Cole Krakow. A really nice reception by Krakow, and it will be a gain of eight. And you see the life. You know, receiver jumps up, Krakow jumps up, and he's excited. He's bumping heads with his teammates. Guys are slapping fives. They didn't have that energy in the first half. They didn't have that at all. And so now you see that picked up. You find them. You, you, you see this team moving the ball, finding themselves now in the red zone with the ability to score a touchdown. Second down and two at the East 12-yard line. Turn and a handoff. A lot of running room on the right side for Gabriel Bowie. He's a running back from La Cueva High School in New Mexico. But it does look like he had enough for the first down. He'll set up first and goal for Team West at the eight-yard line. Team West trying to punch it in for the first time today, grab their first lead just underway in this third quarter. It's been a long, methodical drive down the field. They've done it with the run. They've done it with the pass. They've done it with the penalty. And now, now they got, got punch first it in. and goal. Yep. Just one more thing left to do to check off a successful drive. Burke back to throw. Pressure. He'll take off. He'll run. That's He'll right. score. Patrick Burke, touchdown. Check, 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 check. They ran the football, passed the football. They even got a penalty to give them some extra yardage. They were able to convert. Three third downs on that drive, four third downs on that drive, and it resulted in a touchdown. They were anemic all first half. They went into the locker room. Coach Wallace and his staff put together a masterful drive to come out the first half, and they completed what they needed to do. They came out and gave themselves an opportunity to go up in this football game after that touchdown. So Team West has the lead for the first time in the game, and the extra point try now from... Samuel Buckner is up and good. So Buckner now with a couple of field goals, give him an extra point as well. And with 10 20 or with 12 24 remaining here in the third quarter, Team West with its first lead now at 13 to 7 over Team East. And I'm not sure we can say enough positive things about that drive from Team West. Coach Seneca Wallace and his staff drawing something up to perfection in the locker room, and credit to the offense and Patrick Burke, they came out and executed. And I know the defense are, is happy for Team West because you get a chance to say, all right, our, our efforts you know, in the first half haven't gone in vain. We were really tough, we were really physical, we held it down while you guys were getting yourselves together. And so now you hope and pray they keep that same attitude coming out of the second half defensively for Team West so that now you can put this team thing together, offense playing well, defense playing well, as well as special teams, and vice versa for Team E. They're saying, all right, you guys got an answer. You guys came out and answered. Now we have an opportunity to come out and put some more points on the board. This is the type of game now is getting a little bit interesting. Guys are starting to pick their level of play up, and you might see this thing go from a defensive battle so now some offensive touchdowns being scored. Trevino lets the kickoff go by him for a touchback. 
And Team East will start first down at the 25-yard line. It did certainly appear that the game started to open up a little bit there for Team West on that last drive. I particularly was a fan of how they were going to the quick passing game, Jesse, with the quick comeback routes to the outside for their receivers. And like you talked about, just the simple, small successes that the quarterback can see that it then build on as they uh, really were able to build momentum all the way up to that touchdown. Rhythm throws, see the ball go through the basket, see the ball go to, the, to your uh, receiver's hands, get that rhythm, get the confidence, stay ahead of the sticks, find yourself in a good situation. Handoff Team East on first down and not much. A gang tackle on the running back. Cole Rubel on the carry. Committed to play at Southeast Missouri State and uh, did not get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second down. Another good stop by Team West. You know, being stout up front, staying assignment and alignment sound, not getting out of your gaps, not getting up the field, uh, uh, leaving gaps for you to running back to run through. This is a good defense. And, and when you get points on the board and your offense have a long drive, a defense gets a chance to rest and then they get a chance to play with the lead. And that's a different level of attitude when they can do that. Team East continuing to check that wristband for the play call, double and triple checking. Now the snap back and a throw on the run. That pass is caught and a nice job to slip out of a tackle. That's Rubel, the running back. And he's going to have a big run down the right sideline across the 45-yard line. And a great job by the quarterback, Ripley Luna, to escape a couple of would-be sacks and stay in that play. It yeah, looked like a little Tony Romo right there. Being able to escape, spin around, point, turn around, touch the ground, hokey pokey, get the ball out to his running back for a huge game. All the way out to the 46-yard line, gain of 21. Team East trying to answer the touchdown by Team West a moment ago. Two running backs back there with Luna. And a handoff, Rubel, big hole, left side. And he'll cross midfield and get close to another Team East first down. Nice run there by Team East. And it seemed like now Team East has found their offensive rhythm. Like, all it took was to get to halftime. Get to halftime, get inside, make some adjustments, make some changes. And now both offenses, both Team East and West, have seen to find their rhythm this second half. We'll see how this ends, but right now they're moving the football down the field as well. Rubel out of Seckman High School in Missouri. Having a good drive here. Luna back to throw. Flicks one out to the right side. Pass incomplete. A bit out of the reach of his brother, Colby Luna. It'll be second and ten. West defense continues to harass the quarterback. They've been after the Team East quarterbacks all afternoon. A couple of really big guys up front. Dominique Gatson from Lakeview Centennial High School. Landon Stevens, who had a fumble recovery earlier in this game. Maxon McDowell from Arizona. Here's second and 10, handoff Marquane Taylor up the middle. And Taylor will be spun down at around the 36 yard line. Gain of seven there for Taylor right up the middle. The tackle was made by the aforementioned McDowell. It's gonna be third down and three. And Team West in the neutral zone and it caused movement up front this will be offsides against Team West and will result in an automatic first down. Good That's job. the second time, Jesse, they've gone with that little hard snap count. Good job by Luna having the voice inflection. You know, guys are sitting in those stands and they doing one of those good huts, and now the defensive guy jumps off, jumps off sides. What I would love to see is that when that happens, quarterback, go ahead and snap that thing. Let's get a free play. Let's see if we can steal a play right then and there and receivers go down the field. We're going to heave one up. Maybe we can steal a free play. Instead, it'll be a first down to the Team West 31-yard line. Handoff, Rubel bounces off one would-be tackler, still fighting hard for some extra yardage. To the 27 for a gain of four for Cole Rubel, who has been a stalwart on this drive for Team East, trying to retake the lead. 
and he's running very physical. You know, first contact guys aren't taking him down, having really good contact balance, taking on those hits and still driving his legs for more yards, falling forward, never falling back. That's a, that's a solid running back right there, and he's on display, fully on display in this drive. Luna will go back to throw, plants his feet, steps up, will run it. Going to be brought down at about the 22-yard line. It'll bring up third down for Team East. They're nearing the red zone. This was a nice tackle by Team West to stop Luna from getting the first down. And you see Team East, I'm sorry, excuse me, Team West, they're making kind of some wholesale substitutions. Offensive line, linebackers, they're bringing some fresh guys in there because this drive has been extended and it's been a long drive. So trying to get fresh guys in there uh, uh, to potentially you know, negate the running game that's been happening and to get after the quarterback, Luna. Luna's going to hand off. Rubel going to be stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Nowhere to go. Wonderful tackle made by Christian Pando, number 38, the linebacker from Wilcox High School in Arizona. And it's fourth down. Yeah, he beat the, he beat the offensive lineman right from the snap, got across his face, recreated that line of scrimmage, pushed it into the backfield. The running back had nowhere to go, and the rest of his troops came in, and they rallied and they gang tackled, and they set themselves up for a situation where they've been kind of, you know, getting, getting taken to the woodshed a little bit on this drive, but when it mattered the most, they buckled down, they locked in, and they got the stop that they needed, holding them out of the end zone to a potential field goal. So Team East will try for three, try to cut into the six-point deficit. Halfway through this third quarter. Kyle Conrardi, if he has the same leg and field goal tries as he does on kickoffs, this is well within his range. And it is good. 40-yarder looked very easy there for Kyle Conrardi. And with 7.39 left here in the third, we've got a 13-10 ball game. And one thing that we've seen by both of these offenses, we've seen them come alive a little bit. There's been a spirited effort on both sides of the ball for Team East and Team West offensively. We went from having a defensive struggle and not being able to score many points into the first half into now in the first nine minutes of this game, we got 10 points between the two teams combined. So that they're picking up the pace here, and I like that because, you know, as an offensive guy, I'm a little bit biased, but having the offense kind of get things going is really, really what I came to see. Let's check in again downstairs with Laura Sadler. Okay, we'll go back, go downstairs to Laura here in just a moment. It'll be. Conrardi kicking off. Waiting back deep is Jamie Dawson, but this has been a non-event so far today. The kickoff by Team East once again will go out the back of the end zone for a touchback. It's so credit to those kickers, man, being able to get that ball out of the back of the end zone. That's a credit, you know, to the kickers because you don't want to give up those, you know, those yards. I told you, if I was out there, I'm trying to return everything. But you can't return without the back of the end zone. Yeah, I don't think you'd be able to return that one. No, I don't think they'd no, let you. No, and I'll probably pull a hamstring right now if I did. <laughs> so first down, Team West trying to build on the touchdown that they scored on their last drive. Patrick Burke with an eight-yard touchdown run. 13-7 to is what uh, that made the score at the time. And then a field goal to get the East back to within three. Here's the snap on the first play of the drive and a trick play, an end around here for Team West. Here's Tony McAdoo. McAdoo trying to get out in some space and is going to be brought down after a very short game. Good job by Team East to string that along. Let's go downstairs now once again to Laura Sadler. I'm here with Aiden Armenta, and believe it or not, you have two of your teammates playing with you here today. We got Gabriel Bowie and Colt Mangino. What has this been like to experience this with your teammates? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, just going through high school with those guys and then getting to experience such a cool weekend like this and 
playing in such a cool environment like this. It's really been a good cap to our high school careers and just kind of been cool just to have two guys around to do it with you. And you're a senior. You played a lot of high school football. What does this game and this competition like compared to what you've seen in your high school career? Yeah, definitely a lot of athletes. I mean, every single one of these guys are all state or whatever they wherever they come from. They're the best dudes on their team. So it's good just to compete with some other dudes around the country and kind of just see where you stack up. But yeah, definitely some good athletes out here and it's been an honor just to play with them. You guys are battling back in this game. Good luck as the second half continues. Thank you. Thank you. Let's take it up. Back to you guys. All right, thanks, Laura. Aiden Armenta, the quarterback for Team West, has had a good game so far. Great arm strength. Quarterback out of La Cueva High School in New Mexico. Team West with the ball right now, up 13 to 10. Just over six minutes remaining in this third quarter. And that pass deflected away, incomplete. Getting his big paws up into the passing lane was Colby Plasterer from Orr City High School in Texas. Third down. Great play. Climbed the ladder on that one. Showed the athleticism. Getting up. Getting your hands on the football. If you can't get home, get your hands up. Try to knock it down. That's exactly what he did. Great play. So third down now and 11. Team West not able to replicate the success that they had on that opening drive in this third quarter. Low snap. Running out of the pocket is Grayson King, and King, still on his feet, will reverse field. Looking to get a block. Will get to the 40, and is going to be knocked out of bounds just short of the first down. There is a penalty flag down. The tackle ended up being made by Jordan Foster over here on the near sideline. And we'll have to wait and see what the penalty is about. Looked like it was right behind the play. Yeah, it looked like it was a holding uh, as the defender was trying to go after the quarterback. It looked like he got grabbed from behind. The block turned into a grab, and he was held up uh, from getting to the quarterback. So the officials will sort this out. Didn't look like King had enough for the first down regardless, but the penalty against Team West will be declined. So it will be fourth down, and Team West will send out the punt team. Great effort. <laughs> you know, great effort. Reversing field, breaking a tackle. You know, 53 and a half, from sideline to sideline, it's 53 and a half yards. He, he put about 100 and something yards in on that play right there for a nine-yard gain. You know, it's, it's pretty, there's oxygen on the sidelines over there. He's over there, you know, getting, getting, getting a few pumps of oxygen. So here's the punt. Coming up to get it is Taylor. He does call for a fair catch, even though he had some room to perhaps return that. And Taylor, so Taylor, 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 Taylor. Listen to me, buddy. Return that thing, man. No more, no more fair catches. You got to go out there and really, and really want to make, make, make a play. Splash and make a play. So Team East back out offensively here once again. It'll be John Shapin in as the quarterback. He's from Truman High School in Missouri. First down for Team East, starting back at its 18-yard line. Got a field goal their last time. Shapin back to throw, clean pocket. Nowhere to go downfield. Still looking, flips it forward, and that pass nearly intercepted. intercepted. They do rule it incomplete. The back line judge was right there to make the call. Joshua Villafranco nearly got underneath that. We're going to have a good look at it here, I think. Uh, he trapped it. Yeah. He trapped it. It was a good, good call effort. by the official, but a great effort. You're right, Jesse. Villafranco nearly coming up with a great interception. And that's always the danger as a quarterback. When you begin to scramble and you're trying to get guys to, you know, run around and do the scramble drill, you, now you have all of these guys in a concentrated area. But also with that receiver, you're going to have DBs in that area. And when things go a little bit haywire, it's, you know, it's behind, it's high, it's low, you have the potential of doing what you just saw right there and it being an interception. Luckily, this one hit the ground and you get another opportunity to get a first down. 
Well, especially as a right-handed quarterback, having to throw that against your body, not an easy play whatsoever. Here's an option pitch to the left for Jackson Patterson, and Patterson will be brought down in the backfield. They're going to lose a yard or two. It's going to bring up third down. First time we've seen them bring out that particular look offensively. Five minutes to play in this third quarter, 13-10 to 10 West with the lead. Yeah, and you want to see the quarterback just press that line a little bit more. Just another two steps to get those guys to converge to you and then pitch it out to the running back to where he has an opportunity to turn the corner and get up field. Just hold it a little bit longer before you give it up and make them to make a decision. Shaping back the throw again, pressured and hit and sacked. Back inside the 10. Boy, Team West has been all over the quarterback all day long. That was Carson Combs who fought through a double team and was helped out by Dominique Gatson from Lakeview Centennial High School. Those guys combining for the sack, and Team East will punt the football away. Another one of those covered sacks. You know, when you see the quarterback get the snap and he's looking downfield and he has nothing, he's trying to, like, wait and wait and wait and wait and then he gets sacked. That tells you there's nothing downfield for him to throw. There's no place for him to go with the football down the field. you got to give credit to those defensive backs, safeties, and cornerbacks for holding up and allowing their linemen to get a sack. Well, the East need a good punt, and they get one from Hartshorn. Here's the return by Dawson, though, up the right side, 40. Inside moves 30, and Jamie Dawson still on his feet to the 20, and finally drug down at the 15-yard line. That's why you don't fair catch it. This is why you don't fair catch it. You finally get an opportunity for a big return. This kid has really good vision, really good contact balance. Guy's not wrapping up. He's continued to churn and churn and churn. And now he's put Team West in a prime position to get points on the board with an amazing return on the punt return. Well, this third quarter being controlled by Team West to this point, a touchdown here would put them in firm control of this football game. And Aiden Armenta will be the guy to try and lead them here in the red zone, starting from the 16-yard line of the East. Hand off on first down up the middle and a good start to the drive as Brennan Hills from Castile High School in Arizona got to about the 10. When you watch these zone reads, I'm telling you, man, just pay attention to the quarterback. If that defensive end continues to be undisciplined, 52 Myers, if I'm Arnetta, I'm, I'm pulling it and I'm coming around that left edge. Keep a lookout on that because they may come back to it on this drive. It was actually Cody Lanier who got that carry, and it was a good one. Gain of six on first down. Armenta will throw straight back across the middle, and that batted away incomplete. Receiver and defensive back converging to the spot at the same time. Pass uh, intended for Cole Krakow. Sets up third down. Good defensive play there by Siler Christmas, who's got to make the all-name team. Jesse Holly, I would think. Yes, Jesse Holly, Christmas. It's a holly jolly Christmas. I love it. It's perfect. Here's a third down play. Armenta, this is not perfect for Team West. A sack. And they're going to call Armenta down in the turf at the 20. So no fumble on the play, but that's going to push them back and make the upcoming field goal a bit more challenging. And Myers did a great job coming off that left edge. You watch that dip and that rip. He gets underneath that left tackle, uses his speed. You know, you, you, when, when, you're, when you're evaluating defensive ends, you always talk about the bend. Can they get to that corner and bend their body to get up under that left tackle's arm? You saw Myers do that right there which led to his sack uh, and pushed them out of from getting a touchdown now, pushed them for a really deep field goal. It's a 37-yard field goal attempt here by Buckner to try and add to the Team West lead, and it never got above the crossbar. Might have been partially blocked, but not going to add to Team West's effort here today with 2.44 left. The score will remain 13-10. to 10. That's got to feel really good if you're Team East. Yeah, it does, because you give up a big punt return, and now you're thinking, man, we're, we're starting this thing in our territory, 20-yard line. 
and the, you know at least at the at the very minimum you're going to get three points out of this but the effort from Myers to get the sack pushed him back even more and a 37 yard field goal on a, for high school kids that isn't the that isn't the easiest thing uh, to complete and so you saw it right there with the missed and now Team East takes back over with the momentum of making the stop. And Jake Garcia will be the quarterback. Pocket collapsing quickly, and Garcia will get up to the 24-yard line for a gain of about four on the drive's first play here. 2.30 to play, third quarter. You know, what I also love about this game, it just shows you the, the, the landscape of the talent in this country. While we're here in Arlington, Texas, and there are a lot of Texas teams here, you, you hear when you say the names, New Mexico, Arkansas, Ohio, Florida. I mean, you look across the landscape and you're saying, man, this, this talent pool is so rich and so deep all across the board. There's a broken play and a fumble. Team West will recover this. Both running backs converged at the mesh point and ran into one another. As we take another look, Taylor ended up getting the ball and just never really had it. Recovered by Team West. I don't know if we've seen a team have more opportunities in the opposing team's red zone than we've seen today with Team West. With, and they not have the ability to turn it into points. You think about three, four, five, the three, four times that they've gotten the ball in opponent's territory, and they only got 13 points on the board right now. You've got to capitalize when your defense shows up and shows out and gives you the ball back in your opponent's territory. Enrique Cantu got the recovery for Team West. And so they will start at the Team East 17-yard line. This is just following a drive in which they started at the Team East 15-yard line and came away with zero points on that drive. So this is a big moment in this game, Jesse. Late third quarter, West leading 13-10. to 10. A touchdown makes it a 10-point game. And once again, it's on the shoulders of that Team East defense to come up with a big stop. And they've been doing it all game long. So I think Coach Bell feels pretty confident with the defense being on the football field. The quarterback is once again Armenta. He'll hand off. Coming left side, Cartwright. And Zay Cartwright to about the 13-yard line. Gain of four on the first play of this drive. As he was being chased there by Brent Hopp. Hop number 52 from Turner High School in Wisconsin. So currently committed to play for Central Michigan. He has been all over the place for Team East here today. Arminta in the pistol. Cartwright directly behind him on second down and six. Handoff. Cartwright. No. Nothing. Going to be brought down for a loss. Back to the 15-yard line. And that Team East defense is now two-thirds of the way there here comes third down they've been playing some really stout defense you know again they're backed up in the opponent's territory no 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 fault of their own last time it was a punt return this time it was a turnover by the offense and all they've done is come out and say it's cool don't worry about it brother we got you back we're going to make this stop and they're they're right there so you're looking at third and eight right now see if they can get the stop here I believe that was Chandler Stevens who filled that gap for Team East on the last play and made the tackle. Armenta off his back foot. That nearly intercepted. Dangerous throw by Armenta. Falls incomplete. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, the receiver looked like at the top of the route. He may have fell down. Uh, maybe his feet got underneath him or whatever it was. He wasn't. Uh, it wasn't a clean catch. And, and, and again, here is Team East with a, 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 a very – fortunate situation where you get the ball back in your opponent's territory and yet you're still you're, you're you're failing to give your defense points on the board after they've stepped up and gotten you the ball so maybe three right here but we saw last time that that wasn't just an easy task of, of setting it up and kicking it through the uprights just missed a 37 yarder this one will be 33 yards and this time from the left hash Height was the problem on the last one. It's a low snap. The timing is off. And with no rush, Buckner is able to reset himself and kick it up and in. It didn't look pretty, but it counts for three nonetheless with 34 seconds left. 
Team West will extend its lead up to six. Sometimes that ugly baby is still your baby. <laughs> wasn't, a, wasn't a pretty looking play, but the points count, so you'll take it. Well, and if you're Team East, you've really got two sides of, of the coin here. You've got a defense that's keeping you in the football game and an offense that seems desperate to try to give it away. They've got to figure out the second piece of that if they want to get back into this football game and think about coming away with a win here this afternoon. Of course, it's not all about that. This is an All-American game, so the crux of this game is individual. All of these players are wanting to get something on tape so that they personally can uh, move forward into uh, a life of college football or uh, just whatever the next stage of life looks like. But on some level, Jesse, the uh, yeah, players, gonna, the coaches, say, they all want to yeah. win the football game. I was going to say, yeah, Ryan. You, winning doesn't matter when they stop keeping score. Yeah. You know, They're we keeping score so somebody wins and it matters. We live in the day and time now of social media. And I, I promise you, after spending a couple of days with these guys, they've all exchanged Instagrams or TikToks or Snaps or Twitters or whatever it may be that they use for social media. And so now they've got friends all across the country and you bet your bottom dollar at the end of this game, guys are going to be tweeting and Instagramming and TikToking. The other guys are saying, yeah, but we won. We got the dub. I did this and got the dub. So, yes, it's about the individual situation, and you want to see these guys all have success. And I, want to, I would love for all of these kids to go to the next level. But trust and believe you me, it is always, always about the dub. Well, right now, it's Team West on the right side of that scenario, 16 to 10 the lead. We're nearing the end of the third quarter. And Team East with the football back after the kickoff went out of the end zone. They're starting with it at the 25-yard line. And Ripley Luna will be the quarterback with two running backs and two receivers. To the right, one to the left. And Luna back to throw. Pressured, steps up, and is going to be hit in the backfield. Looks like they're going to give him forward progress to the line of scrimmage. So it'll be second and 10, and both defensive lines have really played well here in Arlington today. That was Lucas Crawford, a defensive lineman on Team West, Mountain View High School in Arizona, that was the first guy to get his arms around Luna and bring him down. And that's going to be the final play of the third quarter. So we go to the fourth here in Arlington, West 16, East 10. We saw some much different things in that third quarter of play, Jesse Holly, than we did in the first half. Team West, again, on the first drive, able to do some nice things, drive down the field, ends up in a touchdown run by Patrick Burke, but... Two opportunities in the red zone, ending up with three points total. That right now is leaving the door open for Team East. And you're going to get that in these type of games because, like we alluded to in the opening, there isn't a ton of practice time, right? Guys aren't able to go out here and have a full week or been together for months at a time. These guys just met each other the other day. And so now trying to get an offense uh, together that's going to give you success can be a struggle at times. Defensively, it's all about effort. It's it's can you go out here, be where you're supposed to be, and beat the man in front of you. That's why you're seeing these two defenses having success today because it's a lot easier to come together as a defense than it is to have the continuity and consistency together as an offense. But it comes down to a point where someone has to make a play. Someone has to go out there and make a play offensively. And, and, and both teams have done it in moments but no one has been able to do it consistently. So we start the fourth quarter with 16 minutes left in this first of three. Class of 2023 Blue-Gray All-American Bowls alongside Jesse Holly. I'm Brian Castle, Laura Sadler, the third member of our team down on the turf here at the home of the Dallas Cowboys. And the referee blows the whistle. We're ready to start the fourth quarter, second and ten. Team East at its own 25-yard line. Luna will launch. Deep corner, man open, pass caught. Woo! Woo! Trevino with a big catch, easily our longest pass play of the game. 
and a penalty flag comes in after the play was over. Tyrell Trevino from Mercedes High School here in Texas being targeted by Conference USA. And what are we going to have here? Well, I'm not sure I ever saw a penalty call, but did definitely saw a flag. I'm thinking maybe the official threw his with the grab for his beanbag and maybe grabbed the wrong one for a placement. I don't I don't know. I, I saw the flag come down, but there was no play call. What a great pass by Luna and Trevino connecting on that corner route. That was a dime. He laid it out there and the receiver went and made a play. That's probably our first play of the day of 20 plus yards. A handoff to Jackson Patterson. And Patterson will spin inside the 40 to about the 38 yard line. Gain of five for the running back from Hillsborough High School in Missouri, being looked at by the Missouri Valley Conference, among others. Second down and about six. That was a beautifully thrown ball by Luna and a great route by Trevino. He got deep in between the safeties. Second down and six. Handoff Patterson. Patterson will be brought down at the 34-yard line. Here comes third down for Team East. The East has only one touchdown in the game. That came back in the first quarter. They got a field goal in the third. And a big third down here. You wonder if this is perhaps four-down territory, depending on what happens on third down. Certainly cannot take a sack. Ripley back to throw, Luna looking, dancing around in the pocket, now will run it himself and has a first down inside the 30. Ripley Luna has gotten things done with his feet, scrambling out of the pocket this afternoon and he moves the chains for Team East. Yeah, Ripley Luna's kind of put together a really good game. We've seen him be able to move around in the pocket, be able to use his legs to extend plays. We saw him in the first half run for that 24-yard touchdown, the only score that Team East had in the first half. But we also showed in that last in the last couple plays him drop a dime uh, 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 on, you know, on that throw to the corner route. So he's showing you a little bit of everything out there in the field today, passing from the pocket, being able to scramble, being able to move around in the pocket, mobility in the pocket, and then drop dime down the football field. Colby Luna, his brother, is lined up wide to the right. Luna will throw. Check down to Patterson, and Jackson Patterson will be brought down around the marker, and a penalty flag flies in as well as the tackle was made by Nathan Reynolds from Meridian High School in Idaho. Might be a horse collar tackle right there. You saw at the end of this, when he goes to bring him down, he grabs up right, right there behind the nameplate. Anytime you grab up between the nameplate, that horse collar pull down tackle, they, that's another one that they kind of taken out of football. Oddly enough, that comes from the Cowboys safety Roy Williams, the, the outlaw the Roy Williams rule, 15-yard penalty to add 15 yards to the end of the run. And now Team East have found themselves in prime position to potentially go in for a touchdown and take the lead back in this football game. Yeah, was that on Terrell Owens? I think that's yes, the, the very first, leg. not, not well, the no, first horse no, collar no, no, tackle. One, but it was the one that broke Terrell yeah. Owens' leg that yes. kind of changed the rules. Uh, and that, that was that the call. year the Eagles went to the Super Bowl, I believe. Yes. Back to throw Luna. First and goal, looking towards the end zone. Fires, pass, caught. Found his brother. A Luna to Luna connection. Somewhere and Team East with a chance to go back in front with the extra point. Somewhere in the crowd, mom, dad, aunt, uncle, brothers, sisters, siblings, whoever, they're happy to say, yep. Brother found brother for a touchdown. That's a pretty sweet moment right there. Those are the kind of moments that you have in the Blue K All-American scrimmages. You can have two brothers playing together, and they find each other on quarterback to receiver, touchdown reception to tie this game up pending an extra point. So the extra point here by Conrardi will give East the lead back. Quite an impressive drive from Team East. Started with a big pass play from... Luna to Trevino, and then Ripley Luna finishes it off with a touchdown pass all the way from Kellogg, Idaho. The Luna brothers coming to Arlington, Texas 
and have given Team East the lead in this Blue-Gray All-American Bowl. An eight-yard touchdown pass. Really impressive drive there by Luna at the quarterback position. He really was the, he was the catalyst behind that. You know, his ability to scramble, to make plays down the field, to extend plays in the pocket, that's what you want to see from your quarterback is being able to have be calm, be composed, but also understand, have the good pocket awareness, keeping my eyes down the field for potential targets down the field. You saw that on the Torres touched uh, a big play, and then he came back and he hit his brother for a touchdown. Right now, we've still got some time left. Early MVP for me, quarterback Luna. All right, we're going to check in downstairs right now with Laura Sadler. They're both in talks with some colleges but have not committed yet. I want to talk to you, Cody, about how this experience is going to help get your name. This is going to help a lot because we're playing against super high caliber men, boys, men. Um, it's going to help me get my skills up and just iron sharpens iron. Exactly. And, Gabe, I'm sure this has been a wonderful time here. You're going to walk away as a better player. You see the coaching here has been really phenomenal. Um, yes, Even yesterday we had a long talk with one of our coaches. Just It was a life lesson, really, and it changed the outlook on a lot of things. How I'm going to perform even later in life when maybe football is not relevant. But it's been it's changed for sure. Well, I'm glad that you guys are stepping away from this with a good experience. We're all here to hope to see you at the next level, so good luck. All right, let's take it back up to Ryan and Jesse. All right, Laura, thanks. Hand off here for Team West, trying to answer that impressive drive that Team East just put together. Team East still in front, 17 to 16, just underway in this fourth quarter. Laura just downstairs with Cody White and Gabe Rue on the west side, couple of big offensive linemen. Cody White, 6'7", 270 from Etzacata High School in Oregon. More than likely gonna go stay in in the state to play his college football. There's a handoff up the middle and a nice spinning run by Chris Pena. You know, those Pena guys right there, it. those two big hogs, those are my, two, my, all, my all grocery bill team. You know, you don't want those grocery bills for those kids right there. When they start hitting that 280, 293 bills, and you're still living in the, you're still living in my house under my roof. That's a lot of pizza rolls. Been looking for another job, maybe that's a, a lot third. Of, that's a lot of pizza rolls right there. You know, and they probably ain't getting that big off pizza rolls. That's a that's a lot of steak that they got now eating in that household. Steak and chicken, and every time you turn around, they're in the refrigerator. And Patrick Burt trying to get to a first down marker, and it looks like he has enough to move the chains with a great effort to keep this drive alive for Team West. Well, well, actually, they, they gave short. him. Yeah, they did. They spotted him short of the 35-yard line. Looked like he fell forward to about the 36 from where I'm sitting, but the officials call him short, and so Team West will go three and out and punt the football right back to the east. Yeah, White at 270 and Rue at 300 pounds. A couple of big guys up on that West offensive line. Here's the return by Taylor coming in on a dead run. Penalty flag is down as Taylor is spun out of bounds at the 40-yard line, and now a second flag has come in. And if Taylor blew a tire on that one, looks like he lost the cleat right after that first tackle, and he was trying to hold on to it, but his cleat's coming off, and he's trying to he's trying to run. Looks like he got a face mask towards the end of that play, but it's real difficult to make plays down the field when you only got one cleat on, Taylor. But I'm glad he finally, he finally said, I'm not going to fair catch this one. I'm going to give myself an opportunity. And he blew it. He blew a Michelin on, around, on his way around the corner. It's been an eventful day for Taylor returning punts. He let one go earlier that allowed Team West to get about 30 more yards of field position. It was eventually downed at the one-yard line. Then he fair caught one at the four-yard line. But uh, good effort there despite losing the shoe. The officials are sorting out the two penalties that we have down on this play. Well, our next Blue-Gray All-American Bowl will be next week. On Monday, that will also be a recording uh, that will be made available to you about 24 hours after the game is played on impactfootballnetwork.com. And then 
Live on the ESPN family of networks, January 30th from Raymond James Stadium. It'll be Team North versus Team South from Raymond James Stadium. We hope you can join us for that live presentation of Blue-Gray All-American Football. Still a long discussion here between the officials. So there was a holding against the receiving team and a face mask against the kicking team. Those offset and we'll replay fourth down. My special, team, my special teams coach in the NFL, Joe D. Camillus, would always tell you, don't commit a penalty on the punt team or the kickoff team, especially the punt team, because nothing good ever happens when you have to punt the ball twice. Guys are a little bit gassed. We've already covered full speed. You know, normally the, 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 the discussion doesn't take that long. So when you got to line back up again and then now sprint down the field another 50 yards again, at times, guys kind of miss their gaps. There's a little bit of cre there's some creases in there, and and the, and the return team can find those gaps and make a huge return. So, you know, hopefully, uh, Team Gray had an opportunity to catch their breath during that discussion, and they're a little bit more uh, uh, sound to go down and cover a kick for a second time. Here's the kick from Maiko. High, spiraling punt, and Taylor calls for a fair catch at the 20-yard line. It looked like he had some room there to maybe at least start a return. But, you know, one thing, Jesse, is it makes it tough on the punt return when you have to backpedal, and all of that credit goes to Maiko, the punter. He did a great job getting that over the head of Taylor. Yeah, Taylor has to have a little bit of better, you know, a bit of bet. He has to have a little bit better awareness and look around and go, I had room. I, I You know, there wasn't a guy in my face. There wasn't a guy barreling down on me. I had some room and an opportunity to catch that punt and give my team an opportunity to start in better field position. They're not bad now, but they could be better had you taken that punt and gotten a couple extra yards. So on first down, Team West getting after the quarterback again. Shapin will go down in the backfield, and that was once again Dominique Gatson, the defensive lineman at 240 pounds from Lakeview Centennial right here in the Metroplex. Loss of six on that play. Not a good start to the drive for Team East. Up a point just underway in this fourth quarter. Shapin will be in the pistol. Three receivers, an H back to the left, and they run the reverse to Woodward. Woodward is trying to fight for a few positive yards and will be brought down after a very short game. Looked like they're going to give him the 19-yard line, so a gain of about five. And here comes third down for Team East. Team West have kind of – they learned their lesson from the first one in the first quarter where they gave up a big, a big gain. They got negated because of a holding penalty. But Team, Team West has said – that reverse is not going to work on us anymore. We're going to be sound. We're going to stay home. We're going to do what we're supposed to do, each and every one of us, so that you don't have that advantage coming around on that reverse. Third and 11. Shaping back the throw. They're going to sack him again. Gatson was in there along with Brock Montoya from Pueblo South High School in Colorado. And it looks like Manrique Cantu was in around the quarterback as well. There were several guys who were available to make that sack, and Team East will punt the football away. This is one of those moments right here when you talk about open space and open field. You're backed up and you're having to punt the ball, Team East. Team West, you got a lot of field to work with. So if, if, you, if you got the opportunity, this is one of those very returnable uh, returnable balls right here. A little bit of a lower punt this time from Hartshorn, and it will go out of bounds. It will give West some good starting field position up around midfield at the 45-yard line. So 13.55 remaining here in the fourth quarter. It was 7-6 to six East with the lead at halftime. Both teams have scored 10 points in the second half. 
And now we will see Patrick Burke as the quarterback for Team West out of Episcopal School of Dallas being targeted by the Conference USA. Pass across the middle, pass caught by Merquan on a quick slant inside the East 40 to the 37 yard line, gain of 18 on that impressive throw from Burke to Jack Merquan. Really good protection up front, up front, giving Burks a clean pocket. He's able to stop back, see, have clear vision, and step into that throw. Anytime you're throwing the ball over the middle of the football field, you want to be able to step into that throw to drive it because if it starts sailing and floating, you can put your receiver in some, in some dangerous situations. There's a zone read keeper by Burke. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, gains maybe one on that play. Second down coming up. Urquan, the third or fourth catch he's had today. He's from Riggs High School in South Dakota. I mentioned earlier that we have players from all over the country here today. South Dakota and uh, Merquan being targeted by the Missouri Valley Conference as well. Second down and nine. Burke back to throw, has to step up into the pocket, fires across the middle and that pass deflected away, but a penalty flag comes in. Pass was broken up by Tyler Christmas, but there is a flag down. He had a guy standing right in front of him. You know, if he looks a little bit to the right, was that Kraken that was next to him? Just as a quarterback, it's great to have wheels. It's great to be a runner. But you want to get the ball into the hands of your playmakers as soon as possible. They were able to pick up the pass interference in that play, but... When you got guys right there in front of you, deliver that football to your playmakers' hands and allow them to do what their God-given ability is, is, is led them to do, is that's to make plays. It is a pass interference against the East. So Team West will have first down at the East 24-yard line. Chance to go back in front here early in the fourth quarter. Handoff. Not a lot of running room on the left side for Jordan Neeson. From Powdre High School in Colorado, 5'10", 175 pounds, and he gains two. Team West continuing this methodical approach offensively, huddling up after each play. And Burke wants to throw. Off his back foot as a man open. Pass caught for a touchdown. Gavin Gorowski from Marshall, Texas with the catch and the touchdown to give West the lead once again. Another clean pocket for Burks. Just sits in that pocket, man. Let that play develop. Tight end comes across. Runs that, runs that corner route. They leave him open. Burks finds them, drops a dime. Soft, soft throw, soft hands. Turns, runs, touchdown. Team West takes the lead again. And the extra point is up and good from Buckner. So Team West back in front now, 23 to 17 with exactly 13 minutes left here in this fourth quarter. And it looked like a blown assignment on the back end for Team East, and give credit to Patrick Burke for recognizing it, finding his tight end, Gavin Pilarowski. And Team West back in front now. Patrick Burke has been the guy at the controls for both of the Team West touchdowns in this second half. He has really played well from Episcopal School of Dallas. Playing in his backyard and uh, out there having some fun for Team West, who's up six. And as this game winds down, we've seen, you know, there's been points in time in this game where, where scoring has been at, has been at a stall. 
And so every point that you can get now really helps your team get closer and closer to that victory. And being up six points seems like a ton of points right now because we aren't getting many touchdowns and teams aren't able to move the ball. So getting a late score has definitely done uh, a good thing for this team. That kickoff a little shorter by Buckner. It looked like they were maybe trying to entice Team East to return that, but it goes by Taylor and out the back of the end zone for a touchback. So first down for Team East, down by six. They have uh, led for a majority of this game. They were up seven to nothing early on a 26-yard run by Ripley Luna. Led seven to six going to the half. Fell behind early in that third quarter, but were able to regain control on a touchdown pass from Ripley Luna to his brother Colby. Uh, just a moment ago, Patrick Burke connecting with Gavin Pilarowski to put the West back in front. Quick throw on first down, out to the right is incomplete. Intended for George Chaplin. Off of his hands to set up second down and 10. Jake yeah, another, one of those, another one of those first down throws, you wanna be able to get an easy throw, easy completion, just to set the drive in motion, get some positive yards, get things going forward. Receiver took his eyes off the football and dropped, just flat out dropped a really easy pass that you wanna get in a game like this because sometimes those those receivers, when you do a tight turn, the DB comes flying off on you, and there's a ton of room up that sideline for you to make for you to make hay. There is a handoff to Cole Rubel, who had a really impressive drive earlier in this half as a running back. This time going to be stopped after a gain of about four. Brings up third down, and this is an important play for Team East. We're still early in this fourth quarter. But uh, they want to try and keep the momentum going offensively, trying to follow up that drive that Luna led him down to score. Garcia back to throw, third and six. Trying to get away from the defenders and will not. He'll be dragged down. John Hayner from Granada High School in Colorado with the sack. Team West has been relentless in their pursuit of all three of these Team East quarterbacks here today. Another big play on third down. Bringing the, bringing the runner down, causing another punt. You know, Team West, they've had their up and downs today, especially offensively. But one thing's for certain, two things for sure, this defense has stepped up uh, uh, and played a really solid football game. Even when they've been put in some precarious situations and been backed up, they've been stout, they've been strong. Another big play for the Team West defense. Hart Shorn with a punt. And Dawson this time is going to let his fellow return man bring this. This is Nicholas Torres, and Torres with a good return. Torres out of Los Lunas High School in New Mexico, and this is a good start to this possession for the West out across the 40-yard line. Looks like there's a shaken-up player down on the field for Team West as well after that play was over. And we've been really fortunate in this game to not see many players injured. You don't want to see kids injured in this game. It's an all-star game. You want to see everybody play, everybody get an opportunity to go out there and show themselves for all scouts to see. And so when a guy gets helped off the football field, you always feel bad for him because, you know, you don't know the extent of the injury, but you don't want anyone to have any injuries in this football game. Didn't get a good look at who exactly that was, but certainly we hope to see him back in the game at some point today. 12.05 left in the ball game. The West with a 23-17 lead and the football starting at their own 40-yard line. Grayson King, the quarterback out of Saxe, will turn and hand off on first down. And not much room to work with there. Carry by Cole Lanier, running back out of Pueblo County High School in Colorado. Second down and about eight. Hope from Team West, you know, he's been really active all day today. You know, in the backfield, lived in the backfield. 
sacks, uh, tackles for losses. He, he's been wreaking havoc all football game long. King back to pass. Going to step up and run it. And will be brought down at about the 47-yard line. Nice tackle made out in space there by Nance Kabasov. It's a great open field tackle. That was, uh, I believe that was Kabasov. I'm sorry, it was Brady Blaylock. Brady Blaylock, the linebacker from Cary High School in North Carolina that made that last open field tackle. Here's third down and three. Pass across the middle is caught for a first down. Nice tumbling catch by the West's Adam Bradford, the tight end from Valley Christian High School in Arizona. And this is a good throw from Grayson King. Yeah, really good throw right there. Uh, the, 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 the receiver you know, gets out, breaks outward. And when you look, you know, King got an opportunity to have a clean pocket, clean look, and was able to drive the ball down and away from any defender for his tight end to make the catch and convert a first down. First down at the Team East 43-yard line. A delayed handoff here for Tyler Ward, and Ward with a nice run. Inside the 35, finally brought down at about the 32-yard line, but not before he got 11 yards and another Team West first down. That's good, strong running from the running back right here in Texas. Team West putting together another decent drive, working the ball down the field, converting in the air, on the ground. You know, like I said today, they've, they've been up and down all day offensively, but these last two drives, they put together two really good drives. And, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you've seen it. You, you see it it's starting to come together a little bit late in this fourth quarter. Here's a throw by King. Deep to the left side. Pass broken up. Nearly intercepted. Really nice defensive effort there from Team East. Alec Guzman back in coverage. And it's going to be second and ten. When your receiver and your quarterback gives you a shot to make a play, but you're looking up and you're going, I'm probably not going to get this, immediately you have to go from being receiver to be defensive back. If I can't get it, they can't get it. And so you, you saw that play right there, him going up, knocking the ball down and saying, the quarterback gave me a shot. We didn't connect, but I can't let you get this interception. Second and ten. Handoff, Ward again up the middle to about the thirty. Gain of two, brings up third down and eight. Team West probably just on the outside of field goal range. So you would think, Jesse, perhaps, maybe Seneca Wallace is thinking the same thing here. Depending on what happens on third down, you might see them go for it on fourth. Let's see if Coach Wallace is maybe thinking similarly here with his play call on third down. Third and eight, King back to throw. Pressure comes, pass across the middle, caught, first down inside the 15. That conversation is voided because Tony McAdoo went across the middle and snagged one for a first down. Good call by Coach Wallace. If you remember earlier in the game, they ran this exact same route going the opposite way of the field, and the ball hit the receiver in right in the hands and he dropped it. They came back to that play again. Only this time, he was there, caught the ball with two hands, completed it, converted a third and eight, giving Team, giving team West a fresh set of downs in the, goal, uh, in the red zone. Grayson King trying to lead his team on a touchdown drive. He's going to hand off here to Gabriel Bowie, and Bowie to the five-yard line. I'm going to be West. honest with you here, Ryan. If, if, if Team West goes in the score right now, the way this game has been going, that might be all that they need as far as points. You know, points have been at a premium. Both of these offenses have had their up and down struggles all day long. The defense has been really good, and the offensive struggles because the defense has been really good. So if they get an opportunity to go and get a touchdown right here, that might be an early death blow for Team, uh, uh, for, for team East. Louie will take the handoff again. 
And it's going to be bottled up at about the four-yard line. Good job by Team East to get in there and force him to the ground. It's going to be third down and three. Team West can get a first down without scoring. They would need to get to about the one-and-a-half-yard line for that to occur. They break the huddle with King as the quarterback, Bowie the running back to his left. And they're going to run it. Bowie to the outside, has a hole, and he scores. Touchdown. Gabriel Bowie puts one in the end zone. The running back out of La Cueva High School in New Mexico. Same high school, by the way, as Aiden Armenta, one of the running backs for Team West. And that, with just over 10 minutes remaining, as you said, Jesse, may be all that the West will need. Just based on what Team East has been able to do, or perhaps better said, not been able to do offensively in this game. The extra point is up and good from Buckner. And it's a 13-point ball game. What an impressive drive. They did it with the run and the pass. Once again, Jesse, mixing it up well. Good play calling by Seneca Wallace and great execution by Grayson King in this West offense. Yeah, and that's what you want. Long, sustaining drive that ends with the ball in the end zone for a touchdown. And they did it, like you said, running the football. They did it passing the football. They converted multiple third downs to give themselves uh, great opportunities to go up 30 to 17 in this football game and say what you want about Team West and they've had their offensive struggles today but when they needed it the most they found a way to get it done and whether that's been King at, at the quarterback position or, or anyone else Team West has found this way in a position right now still a long time to go 10 minutes and nine seconds left to go in the football game remember this is an all-star game and things can happen very, very sneakily, very trickily. Uh, things can happen. We can have a kickoff return back for a touchdown right now, and that changes the dynamic of the football game, and now we have a football game. So, you know, you, you just never know. But the way this thing has been trending, that might have been enough to win this football game. Well, once again, another kickoff going out the back of the end zone for a touchback. I'm not sure that we've had a kick returned in this game. So Team East will start. Down 13 with the ball first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. One thing to keep an eye on here in this drive is that east offensive line. That Can they keep that front four from the west out of the backfield? That has been a continuous story all afternoon of Team West getting into the backfield, causing a lot of trouble, mostly sacks on the quarterback. And Ripley Luna is going to be the quarterback for Team East on this drive. He's got his brother Colby, who caught a touchdown from him earlier, lined up wide to the left. And the one thing about Luna, he gives you that athletic ability. So even if the rush is coming, he has the ability to evade the rush and make plays downfield. Clean pocket here. He'll step up and be tackled at about the 27-yard line. Gains about two, but that's pending a penalty flag. That will come in, and Luna escaped that pocket pretty quickly. I thought he maybe had some, it was a clean enough pocket for him to hang around in there maybe a little longer, but we've seen that consistently from the East quarterbacks to maybe leave that pocket a second or two sooner than they maybe need to. This is a holding penalty against the East. Going to move them back to the 15-yard line. Yeah, his pocket probably was a little clean right there because they were probably grabbing the holding, holding defenders a little bit uh, for Luna. But, you know, offensive linemen, sometimes they, they, they get a little bit of handsy. They, they start grabbing, especially late in games. Guys are tired. You know, guys are a little bit exhausted, you know, in this game. Been running around for a while. So we'll, 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 see, we'll see what Luna can do if he has something special left in him. He'll go back to throw here on first and 20. And that pass intercepted. A pick six returned by Team West Cameron Fields, and the pass may as well have been intended for him. Team West got some pressure up the middle. Luna wasn't able to step into the throw. The receiver stopped on him. 
Cornerback just stepped right in front of it. Great hand catch. Return for an interception. Pick six for Team West. And if their last touchdown didn't do it, that one definitely sealed the deal for Team West. Pending this extra point, a 20-point lead with about nine minutes and 22 seconds left to go in the game. A huge defensive stop and turnaround for Team West on the pick six. And once again, Jesse, you mentioned it, but it was the pressure provided by Team West that forced the errant throw. And Cameron Fields with the return, the defensive back from Aubrey High School right here in the state of Texas. As we take one more look at it, pressure up the middle provided by Braden Scott from Tank Verde High School in Arizona, and that forced the quick throw. And the rest is history. It makes it a 20-point game, the West in front. And we mentioned this earlier, but the last three of these All-American Bowls for Blue-Gray football have been decided by seven points or less. I'm not sure that we're going to have that here this <laughs> afternoon at AT&T Stadium. No, we probably won't have that one today. I'm still holding that hope that one of these kickoffs are going to come out of this. And we usually see a special play happen on special teams. So I'm still holding that hope that Taylor or, or, or one of his teammates will be able to return one of these guys out of the end zone for a big play and then make it closer than we expected. But right now, 20-point lead for Team West. This one will probably end in a double-digit uh, victory for Team West. There's the kickoff by Buckner. And it will bounce about eight yards deep in the end zone for a touchback. Samuel Buckner and Kyle Conrardi have both shown off the leg strength on kickoffs today. They haven't been perfect on field goals, but uh, boy, kicking off has been a spectacle to watch. There have been no kickoffs returned today, all touchbacks, all afternoon long here at AT&T Stadium. And a lot of these kickers have, have worked with who? Cole's kicking. Cole's kicking, that's what it is, Cole's yeah. kicking. Anthony Giuliano here, as he always is, a part of that organization. These guys are some of the best kickers in the country. Kickers are athletes too, right? Right? Yes. Sure. Absolutely. They, they have a jersey. They're on the team. <laughs> as Pat McAfee would say, for the brand. <laughs> Handoff here for Team East on first down. Cartez Williams. There's not a lot of room to run as the tackle was made pretty immediately there by uh, Carson Combs. Combs has been all over the field defensively today for Team West. He is a defensive lineman from Marshall, Texas. Yeah, and if I'm Team East, I'm, I'm, I need a sense of urgency. I need, I need to get to the line of scrimmage. I need to have a little bit of sense of urgency. You know, I'm not saying abandon the run, but this might not be the time being down 20 where you want to stick with the run you need chunk plays and you need them in a the heartbeat. Shapin will spin back to his right and throw on the run to Trevino. And Trevino with a nice catch. Right at the 35 yard line should be enough for a first down. It was a good looking play from Shapin to Trevino. And that's what you want to see. The ball now has to go down the field. You, you, you got to abandon whatever game plan you may have come into this game with. When you go down 20 points and it's eight minutes and 25 left to go in the fourth quarter, you got to abandon all of that. And now you got to kind of go to that portion of your playbook that allows you to get chunk plays. You got to try to look to get 12, 15 plays per down to move down the field and score points in a hurry. Here is big pressure up the middle. It's Combs again, and he flings shape into the turf with another sack. Carson Combs beating his man. And another sack for Team West. Yeah, taking sacks in these situations, you never, you, you don't want to give them up, but that one, pressure right up to middle. Combs beat his guy so bad, he came inside, and Chapin had nowhere to go but down for a sack. First and 17 coming up for Team East. We'll go downstairs now to Laura Sadler, who is with the Luna Brothers for Team East. Laura, take it away. I'm ready? Okay, I'll count down three, two, one. You ready? Okay. Three, two, one. 
All right, you are not seeing. Du oh, yeah. Okay, ready? Three, two, one. Don't worry, you don't need to get your eyes checked. You are seeing double. We have the Luna twins with us, Ripley and Colby. Ripley, you ran in for a touchdown, then you connected with your brother for another touchdown. They talk about twins have telepathic powers. Is that true? And if so, is it an advantage as far as chemistry playing with your twin? Yeah, so honestly, I wouldn't so much say it's like telepathy, but it's like, yeah, like catch with them. So I just, I know them that much better than everybody else. So I don't know, we're just always on the same page. And it definitely, yeah, it definitely shows and it pays off for sure. And you guys are looking to play college, haven't committed. You have a couple schools in mind. Are you guys a package deal or are you willing to split up? Definitely, we're definitely a package deal. We're going together. That's, we've said that since we were little ass kids. So that's where we're going to be is together. So. That will be great to see at the college. I'm sure your parents will appreciate one trip at a time to see you both too. All right, good luck you guys. Let's take it back to you. All right, Laura, thanks very much. Team East with the football. And they have it with a fourth down. So they go three and out on this drive and have to punt it right back to the West. Jamie Dawson back to return. And along with Nicholas Torres, who will take this punt and spin his way up across the 40. A good return. Nice job by Torres to the 42-yard line. And Team West will have the football with just over six and a half minutes to play with a 20-point lead. And uh, Coach Seneca Wallace's team doing a nice job making halftime adjustments. They were down 7-6 to six at the half. So just a great job by the West coming out in the second half. They've done it offensively. They've gotten a pick six. Here's the snap back on first down. This is Armenta with a pass completed to the right side for Cole Krakow. Krakow will be brought down at about the 45-yard line. And, you know, for Coach Wallace and, and Team East having a 20-point lead, you kind of want to get into that what we call the four-minute offense. You want to be able to bleed this clock out some. You know, you see the first, first down pass. It's a risky pass because what you do is – Excuse me, if it's incomplete, the clock stops. So you want to keep the ball on the ground so that now Team East has to burn those timeouts and then you're able to burn some of that clock which you run in the football. Zay Cartwright is the running back here. We're going to shift him back behind the quarterback. Armenta. And the handoff to Cartwright up the middle. Trying to dance his way through the line and it's going to be stopped after a short gain, gain two up to the 47 yard line. So here comes third down. Team East trying to get a quick stop. Get back into this football game. But uh, right now time is their enemy with five and a half to play. And you see Coach Wallace, you know, they're breaking the huddle late. They're walking to the line of scrimmage. They're milking this clock down. And you shouldn't snap the ball anytime before two seconds. Get everything out of this possession and, and, and run this clock down as far as you possibly can. We'll see if they put it in the air on third and five. They will. Armenta will go back to throw. He's going to go deep down the right sideline. And Merquan, the intended receiver, got held up on the play in coverage. Silent Young was providing the coverage, and he may have just drawn a flag. Yeah, that's going to be a pass interference. Uh, you saw him grab the jersey, got beat down the sideline, eyes were in the backfield, and Marquand ran a good route up the sideline. And instead of giving up a touchdown, he said, you know what, I'll just give up either the pass interference or the holding penalty and allow them to get the first down, but we don't give up a touchdown. And possibly we can have another opportunity to get after the quarterback and, and get a strip sack fumble or get an interception or something uh, positive for the defense. But on that play right there, offense won with the pass interference. Good job by Armenta to recognize Merquan had a step on the defender. Interesting call by Team West to go to the air there on third and five instead of just keep it on the ground and try to run some clock. It's an old quarterback for you right there, Seneca Wallace. That quarterback in him just won't let him run the football. He has to pass it. And on first down, they will run it for not much. 
to about the 43-yard line. Gain of just about nothing there. It'll be second down coming up. On that carry was Jordan Neesant from Colorado being looked at by some schools out of the Big Sky Conference. Second down and 10. Well, these guys come from all over the country. They spend three or four days in the host city, have a couple of practices, three hours each, and uh, have a jersey presentation, a couple of really nice dinners back at the hotel, and this opportunity to play at the home of the Dallas Cowboys. That pass tipped and nearly intercepted off of the hands of Gavin Copenhaver, one of the linebackers. And it will be third down and 10 for Team West. Yeah, a little bit dangerous play calling right now by, by Coach Wallace. I get that he has a 20 point lead and you know, we talked about winning matters. Sometimes you wanna win by a little bit more uh, uh, than that, but you saw right there potentially interception. That's the last thing that you want to do. You don't want to turn the ball over in this situation. So I think right now, and I could be wrong, but handing the ball off just seemed like the right thing to do in this situation. And that's a fumble. Armento will fall on it, fortunately, for Team West. They tried to delay draw there to the running back, Neeson, and uh, that did not go well. I beg your pardon, it was Hills who never had that football. Armenta right there to hop on it. It'll be fourth down and Team West will punt it away. Yeah, Team West flirted twice with devastation. Uh, play before that, a potential interception, and then you turn around, try to run the draw. Again, miscommunication, fumble balls on the ground. You're lucky to get it back, but it's plays like that that you just don't want to have late in the football game when you're up 20 points. Just turn around and hand the ball off to the running back and get what you can. Team East coming after the punt, and they just drew a penalty flag. Young will field it at the 10. He's inside the five-yard line now and is going to be tackled inside the one. It looks like they will give him forward progress to the four. Now it was fourth down and 16, so unless this is roughing the punter, then you're probably going to see Team West decline the penalty, I would think. But if it's roughing the punter, it's an automatic first down for Team West. It was running into the punter. So Team West will deny the uh, penalty. And so it'll be first down Team East at their own three-yard line. Well, a little bit of gamesmanship there from Team East coming after the punt. <laughs> this is one of those games where you're not supposed to come after the punter. But I guess it was like, yeah, well, whatever. We'll try to get one. <laughs> so Team East ball, they are uh, back it up inside their own five-yard line for the third time today. One time they had to punt out of this situation. The other time they were able to get a big pass play to flip the field position a little bit. And now we'll see what they're able to do here with just under three minutes to play in the game. Ripley Luna, fresh off of his interview with Lara Sadler, back in to play quarterback now for Team East. And his brother Colby is lined up wide left in this formation. They're going to hand off. Rubel will get out of the end zone and then some. He's at the 10, 15, and will walk out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Good run by Rubel for a first down. Yeah, you want to get off the edge of your end zone. You don't want to be standing in the back of your end zone trying to call plays. Good run by Rubles. He gets out of bound after a large gain. And, and if, it, if you're going to make a comeback in the last two minutes and 43 seconds, you need chunk plays, right? You, you, got, you got to get the big chunk plays, 15, 20 yards plays down the field. Whether they come run or passing, you need chunk plays at this portion of the game. Well, theoretically, the defense should be allowing you to get some of those because they're just trying not to give up touchdowns. They're okay if you hand it off for six or seven yards at a time. There's another handoff to Rubel, and Rubel this time will get to about the 25-yard line. Gain of six to bring up second down. Well, if the 
West team ends up holding on by this margin. It will be quite a testimony to Coach Wallace's halftime adjustments. They were down seven to six at halftime. Came out and scored 31 so far in this second half. Here's an option pitch to the right, Rubel, with a hesitation move across the 25-yard line to about the 27. Going to be third down in about a yard. Unless there's a quarter that I miss, <laughs> Team East is taking their sweet time getting to the line of scrimmage as if there's more time in this football game. You need to see this thing kind of go a little bit more faster, get plays in, get plays run, uh, try to get the ball down the football field. A lot of run plays, uh, uh, you know, a, a lot of plays in short yardage. That's not going to get it for you right now. And a timeout is called here by Team West, I believe to uh, stop the clock, I guess. Not really sure why they would call the timeout there, but 131 left in this fourth quarter. Team West offense has come alive in this second half. They got a pick six as well from their defense. Cameron Fields with that return. And despite several Empty trips to the red zone. Team West with 37 points up on the board. You just imagine what it would be, Jesse, had they been able to convert yeah. some of those trips that they came up empty on or had to settle for field goals. Handoff up the middle here for Jackson Patterson. Patterson will have a first down to the 34-yard line. And this just may be the gentleman waving the right flag from, from Team East, understanding that we're down. 20 points, and there are no 20-point touchdown plays that you can call right here. So, and hey, we're probably just going to run this thing out, let the clock run out, and we're going to call this one a game. So it will be the first time in four games that we haven't had a contest decided by a possession or less. There's a nice throw and a catch from Luna to Luna again. Colby Luna in traffic, able to come down with that throw from his brother Ripley. Take another look at this throw from Ripley Luna, fitting it into a tight window where only his guy could get it. Luna again back to throw. This time will have to be running off to his right, and he'll just go out of bounds short of a first down with 38 seconds left. I've been impressed with what Ripley Luna has been able to do today. He had the first touchdown for Team East on a, a running play of 26 yards and then a touchdown pass a little later to his brother Colby is a, at least seemed to me to be the most effective quarterback for Team East today. Yeah, he's showing you a lot. He's shown the ability, even on that last run, to break containment, break the pocket, and still be able to get up the field. He shows you athleticism. He shows you mobility. He shows you pocket awareness. He showed you throws from the inside to the outside. He can drive it. He has touch. He's done a lot of good things for himself today at the quarterback position. That pass deflected up into the air and nearly intercepted. Another great play by the defensive line for Team West. That's Combs. Carson Combs was in the conversation there trying to get to that interception. He was the Can't one that uh, batted it up in the air, it looked like, Jesse. I think Cantu got the hand on it, and Cole tried to get the interception. Those two for that defensive front on Team West have been wreaking havoc all afternoon on the quarterback. I don't care who was in there, Luna or anyone else. Those two guys, Cantu and Combs, have been just in, living in the backfield all day long. So third down and four. Luna back seven steps, deep throw across the middle, and that pass off of uh, two different West defenders incomplete. A pass intended for David Woodward across the middle. And it's going to be fourth down. And it looks like Team East will just keep their offense out on the field, try to get this fourth and four with 24 seconds left. Luna back to throw, and the pass will be incomplete. He was looking for Colby Luna, his brother, 
But he was well covered on the play, and the incompletion will give it back over to Team West with 18 seconds. It'll take one snap, and that'll be all. Team West will walk out of AT&T Stadium today as winners of the Blue-Gray All-American Bowl with an impressive second-half showing. Yeah, they went to the halftime, Coach Wallace and his coaching staff, and they really got and figured this thing out. They were very, very, very pedestrian and very mundane offensively in that first half. Couldn't get much going. They go in the halftime. That's what you want. Coach, good coaches are able to go into the halftime, make the necessary adjustments, come back out, and correct the wrongs of the first half doings. And Coach Wallace and his coaching staff have done that. And you saw Team West be able to get in the end zone on multiple occasions, capped off by a pick six by their defense, who's been stout for them all day long, which will lead to a 20-point uh, win today in this football game. Might be one of the more impressive defensive showings we've seen in these Blue-Gray All-American games. Despite the 17 points Team East was able to score, the Team West defense dominated, and they win it 37 to 17. Thanks for joining us for this presentation of the Impact Football Network. The final score today at AT&T Stadium, Team West 37, Team East 17. Jesse, any final thoughts from today's game? You know, congratulations to all of these young men to have this opportunity to play the great game of football that I love, that they love, that has changed my life, and hopefully it changed a lot of their lives. And if it doesn't, you in, you went out on the bang. You got to play your last high school football game in AT&T Stadium. Kudos to all of these young men. God bless them, and I hope to see them at the next level. Such an amazing opportunity, and we are just underway in the class of 2023. We've got another one of these coming up for you next week. December the 19th here from AT&T Stadium, and we hope you'll uh, catch the recording of that, the archive of that on impactfootballnetwork.com. Until then, for Jesse Holly and the entire team here at AT&T Stadium, thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you next time here on the Impact Football no Network. Losses, I don't do lipo. A few screws loose in the head, I'm a psycho. Promise you the part, just as real as the bite, though. Misunderstood, you can call me a typo. I, I shine hotter than the stars in the night, though. Hate the who's who's, don't give me a tight, though. Flip the assets, so I don't worry the price, though. Got scratched like mine, no, leave it to the tribal. Ah, I ain't even trying to try, though. I, I can do this with my eyes closed. If I got nothing on my goals, my girl ain't plastic, she don't even recycle. All these kids just want to be idols. All these kids just want to be rival. I need something way more than viral. I need something way more than viral. Gotta be something way more than idol. Idol, 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 idol. Be careful not to get too close. I might just go. I'm